It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. I'm back. They're going to catch me up on all the events of the last couple of weeks, including Microsoft's education event, in which they announced not only a brand new operating system, but a brand new laptop just for education. We'll, we'll also talk about some exciting new features in Visual Studio 2022 and .NET 6. And is it bye-bye to Channel 9? A fond farewell coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 750, recorded Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. The Cadillac Cimarron of PCs. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Worldwide Technology and Intel. With an innovative culture, thousands of IT engineers, application developers, unmatched labs, and integration centers for testing and deploying technology at scale, WWT helps customers bridge the gap between strategy and execution. To learn more about WWT, visit www.com slash twit. And by Hover. Whether you're a developer, photographer, or small business, Hover has something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. Go to hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. And by ESET. Nobody wants their organization to be patient zero in a cyber attack. Right now, ESET Protect Complete is 20% off and you can try it before you buy. Get your free ESET business trial and an interactive demo at business.eset.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm sitting on the ancient grounds of the Miwok tribe. I am a portly elderly man with gray hair, a big oh, schnoz. So you did see the Microsoft. My event. pronouns are he <laughs> and what the hell. Hi, Paul. Hi, Mary Jo. Good to see you. Hello. <laughs> I did see that. Actually, you know, there was a lot of, you know, kind of buzz on Twitter, as there is yeah. for yes, anything. There always is, yeah. But sure. I thought, you know, that's fine. I mean, a little, it's a little weird talking about we're on the native lands as if, well, what, are you going to tear it down? What are you going to do? Yeah. Right. But uh, I think it's appropriate. I think they were bragging, Leo. You know, Maybe. I think they were bragging. <laughs> yeah. I do think, we're though, hold it over that for uh, non-sighted viewers and others the descriptive stuff is fine i don't mind that you know yeah that's fair he should have said i have a mohawk but okay other than that <laughs> he, left, he left an important part out one of the presenters but other oh, than poor that, nick nick fillingham <laughs> our friend <laughs> he didn't, I, I was waiting for him to say and i have a mohawk but he he's the best guy it's character. sad that this happened to him <laughs> uh anyway that was microsoft ignite um <laughs> And um, we, I'm sure you I talked think, about it last week. I do want to thank Micah. I think Sturgeon. that encapsulates it nicely. Right there. Honestly. I, said, I did it all. Yeah. yeah. Micah, thank you for filling in for me for yes. two weeks. <laughs> he did a great job. No surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's uh, both a, a gratifying and depressing that I can yep. leave and everybody's happy. Er. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way about my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kids are that same thing. You're back? Michael's going, you're back already? Why? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yes. We said, what'd you live on? He said, and we said, there's no bacon left. Did you live on bacon? Yeah. <laughs> every day, we every left, meal. We left him with like four pounds of bacon one week gone. Oh, man. Uh, but you know what? That's why it's cool when, you're, when your folks are out of yeah. the house. So... Um, anyway, you guys, uh, Paul, you were in Paris. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks. It feels like an eternity ago, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that happened. Did yeah. you have fun? It was it nice? It was fantastic. The weather yeah. was perfect. And we, I, we make this mistake where we do too much on the first day, no matter what we do. And we kind of slow it down. And this trip, that did not happen. We went to town. I mean, we walked 20,000 steps a day. We Oh, I love that. Did all that the cities. We, we did, you know, we don't always see all the tourist stuff. We did every yeah. site. We did, you know. Yeah. It was good. Fun. Really good. Favorite restaurants. Yeah. And Mary Jo, did you uh, did you go anywhere? I did not. I, I was here in New York the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you don't have to go anywhere if you live in New York. The world I know. Comes to I kind of feel like that. Yeah. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Although uh, I do miss flying. I haven't flown since we went to WTT. That yeah, was the last time yeah. I've been on a plane. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, well, this was our first international trip in two years. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I'm, it's interesting, Paul, that you didn't like, oh, here we are in Paris and go go gaga, so to speak. Um, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I would have I would have overdone it on the first day. Oh, no, I know. I, I think we were so flush with adrenaline that we couldn't overdo it. Uh -huh. Like we, yeah. we were just, it was just great. Like nice. we, there was no oh, nice. crashing or a period of time where we were like, oh, we got to settle down here. It's just too much. It's mm. like, no, we, we, we got this. this I it. just kept saying, Ex explain to me why I don't live here again. Oh, I know. <laughs> it, again and again and again. And it always, it just comes out. What's your favorite part? Is it the coffee, the bread, the food, the... I guess I it's love the whole food. cafe culture thing. Cafe culture, um, yeah. yeah. You can go to the, the dumpiest little tourist cafe and get the craziest, most excellent I know. food. I know. Giant burrata salads. Oh, I love that. I get mm. this chitterling sausage probably nobody wants to talk about. It's basically different kinds of intestine wrapped in other kinds of intestine. Only in France, um, baby. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, it is. It's, it's, it's I had four of them on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's oh, just, yeah. uh, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Welcome back. Um, here we are. Uh, it's it's already November. You know what I didn't uh, I didn't know, and I know you've talked about it, but Mary Jo, mm -hmm. did I make a mistake not buy returning my duo <laughs> to not buying it? <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to talk to you about that. No, you did not make a mistake. Oh, um, right. I haven't done my duo review, and frankly, the reason is every time I pick it up to check on it or try out something. I can't remember how to do anything because it's so <laughs> not intuitive. I'm like, how do you do this again? Uh, I did this what? last last time I did it, but now I can't remember. Do you pull it to the right, to the left? Where do you put the gesture up, down? I'm like, oh, this is just a confusing mess. But the uh, hardware is still nice. Hardware is nice. Camera's better. It's beautiful looking um, hardware. It's so nice to hold it in your hand, but every time I open it, I'm like, uh, no. Not, not going to do that. And you both, <laughs> both you and Paul ended up with the Pixel 6 as your daily driver. Is that right? We did. Yeah. yeah. And you, yeah, 6 Pro. Now, I'm not having the 6 Pro. I'm. You asked me uh, before we yeah. started about the finger thing. And I, my fingerprint reader is is pretty snappy. You don't like it? No. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> so I, here's, here's how I'll describe this. I, I think the most frustrating thing in technology is not something that doesn't work right. It's something that works intermittently. And this yeah. thing, you know, I, I, I'm so, I'm more nervous when it signs in than when it doesn't because it's so fast. Sometimes it's like, wait a minute, there's no way this thing read my finger. And then other times I've, I tap it so many times I have to type in oh, my pen. It weird. forces me to. Yeah. Through the yeah. screen uh, finger. See, I missed. Okay. So through yeah, this. Not recognized. Yeah. Through the f screen fingerprint yeah. reading is, is, I admit, and I've had other phones with it. Uh, you have to hit the target and they put a, they put a little target if you yeah, miss the target, it's not good. But now I, I, I um, put in OnePlus figured this out. The, yeah, the OnePlus does this. Perfectly. Is it better? Oh, it's way better. They do. Um, so it, I can't remember. OnePlus is doing optical, I think. Yeah, this is also optical. Is this also optical? Mm -hmm. Not not yeah. infrared, which is 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 a far inferior technology. No, and then there's a third one uh, that Samsung's using, which is supposed to be great. Although I don't I don't have a. 2021 Samsung, so I'm not sure what. Yeah, that's like. my this uh, mm -hmm. this is the Flip uses the fingerprint reader on the on this, which is much far yeah. superior. That's way better. Yeah. Why can't they yeah. do oh. that? <laughs> yeah. Why can't they just do what they did? It, they, put it on the back. I know. Of, I know it's. Perfect. They could put it on the it back. Works. It was. Put it on the it's back. Perfect. <laughs> Um, on the, uh, it's uh, so, so infuriating. I'm almost ready to like remove the fingerprint and just use pin all the time. Oh yuck. It's bad. Yeah, it's really I can't bad. go back to finger to pin. That's the problem. Are you guys I, using screen protectors? I'm trying to think of why. Nope. Nope. I, think I retrained it. I deleted my fingerprints. I redid it. Uh, I put in two fingerprints of the right. same finger to try to see if I could increase the you know visibility of what my fingerprint is. Nope. I'll tell you, <laughs> and maybe it's because you guys uh, I, the the iPhone does not have fingerprint. It only has Face ID. And is right. such a terrible solution. Half I the, hate Face in, ID. I'm sitting in the airport. Well, I, everybody's see, I like messed up, and I'm going. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. Because like this, you right. know, it. I hate it. Same. Um, so it, okay. so it's maybe way worse compared than the to the it Face ID, the <laughs> Touch ID, the fingerprint reader is a little better. I know. I'm hoping they can just push out a little system update that will fix it. That'd be great. Yeah. According to Google, the issue is security. You're supposed to hold your finger yeah. down longer than maybe you're. You wait for that. You wait for the haptic feedback, um, right? 
I've tried yeah, that. Yeah, but it's just... No, know, that's a lie. Know. That's just a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that time it went right in. I mean, this is the thing. It's it's intermittent. Like sometimes it's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't work well if you're casual. A little longer. You have to kind of uh, pay attention, I guess. And yeah. So that's yeah. a drawback. If your you, finger's cold, forget it. It totally. Well, maybe that's it. Like, you guys are back east. I don't. I have. I don't have cold no. fingers. No. No. It's no. It, but, it's just bad. It's bad news. It's yeah, my only it's, big it's, regret it's so far about the Pixel 6 Pro. <laughs> Re I really wish the thing had been on the back. I, we, I, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. I almost have anything to complain about. I mean, there's other little things for sure. But How's your battery life? Pretty good or? Great. Yeah. It's got a 5 really I've seen complaints about that, but this is a full day of battery. Yeah, full day. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. You know what? You again. That's one where if you compare it to the iPhone, the iPhone's a big winner. The yeah. iPhone 13 because they've done. Well, the iPhone is also, but it's thicker and heavier too because yeah, yeah. they have, it has a bigger mm. battery, right? It has a bigger. So battery, the, yeah. the Pixel 4a 5G and 5a both get up to two days of battery life. That's incredible. Hmm. But you really wow. suffer from it day to day because it's just the performance is not there. Yeah. I, this is a better. This is the better ratio of performance to battery. I think. Um, oh, that's one I thing about was... the Duo. I will say the battery life is unbelievable on that thing. It's I'm like getting like four days. It should sometimes. be though. Does it have two batteries, one on each screen? I think it does. I believe it yeah, does. Sure it does. Um, yeah. But it is so great. I'm like the hardware on that thing is pretty okay, and the software experience is not. And yeah, okay. adding Android gestures plus Microsoft gestures is a nightmare. Like I immediately turned yeah. off Android gestures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm sorry. by the third time, maybe. I just, I, I, I've owned almost every single Pixel ever made. Um, the only major one I didn't have was the 5 last year. But I mean, I bought the 4A, the 4A 5G, the 5A. I mean, I, I basically owned every Pixel. And mm -hmm. I think my, the, the fingerprint is stinks, but I, I'm surprised the photography isn't better, better. than it is compared yeah. to what it's I've been good. used to. It's, it's, it's just good. as good as it was before, and then it has uh, already um, 4X Zoom. You know what it is? Oh, just, so, it yeah. Zoom's good. It's good for Instagram is what it is. It's yeah. like good if you're not going to zoom in. It's good for social, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what most people want anyway. Right. Um, you know, the also, and I took it to Mexico for the photography. I was okay, but mm -hmm. I'm glad I brought a good camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I wanted it to do the translation thing. Right. Yeah. And I don't right. know, what was your experience with that, Paul? I, I, I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. So we're going to, we'll go to Mexico in January. We'll see how that works. I will say this. Um, we I had huge problems with, on the 5A in Paris, trying to talk into it to compose text or whatever. Lots of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then you switch to this oh, one. It's so much and better. It's, it's yeah. hyper accurate. And it's yeah. actually kind of crazy because it keeps recording. <laughs> so if you're not careful... <laughs> I'll do. I'll be sitting in front of the TV, and I'm like, "Hey, uh, what are you doing at 5? And then the dialogue from the TV show I'm watching, I'm like, flies through the text. Oh, I know. It's <laughs> pretty amazing. I know. Yeah, it's. Crazy. I do agree with you on that. I this. I yeah. wasn't really able to get simultaneous translation. Uh, what okay. what we happened was with a lot of the uh, things that we did, uh, we'd have a, a Spanish speaker, and then a mirror yeah. would translate. Uh, yeah. And I was hoping I could just like have it translate the Spanish speaker. And for some reason, I just it didn't. Now, maybe yeah. it was just user error. Also, I know it's supposed to happen on device, but because my internet was very spotty, as one would expect, yeah. uh, it might have had something to do with that. I'm wondering if it did. Did you use Google Fi in Mexico? I did. I used Fi yeah, and Verizon. That's usually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, this, that's the other cool thing about this is you can put a Verizon SIM and use a dual SIM. Because right. it has an eSIM capability, so That's I right. had both Google Fi and Verizon. Yeah, I did the same thing. Uh, switch yeah, around. My last room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, uh, it's right. you know, as always happens with these phones. You know, you the you look at the specs and the announcements, and you go, "Oh, this is going to be the best phone ever." Yeah. You get it yeah. home, and it's really uh, a little bit more yeah. of a nuanced experience. I, I I went into this. I literally wrote, "I know this thing is not going to change my life." And in the background, I was like, oh, my God, please change my life. Please change my life. And it, it's a little, it's hard not to get caught up in that kind of nonsense, you know. And it's just, well, it was, it's it's good. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not this gigantic leap forward. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know. It's yeah. good. Yeah. It's 
a, it's a, it's, I don't know. It's, it's weird not to, uh, you know, if I was like an Apple guy, I would be like, Oh my God, it's, everything's perfect. I love it. You know, I wish I could be like that, you know, but I, I just, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I know. I, I, I guess because the camera was so good on the 3XL, which was the last phone I had, I'm like, yeah. oh, this one's, right. I don't know, is it better? So I the 3XL, <laughs> did that have a single lens? That's a big did you have a, yeah. I don't remember. What, does one lens in the uh, back or was th- there an ultra wide and a main? I, I don't remember. I think it's I one. know there were two in the I, front because you, you that one had the ultra wide selfie mode, which I actually thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, with two lenses, I think, on the front. I don't know. I, don't I take so few yeah, selfies. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah but maybe once in a lifetime. Good for so you, I am so proud of you because this is my pet peeve. I'm looking yes. at people's Instagrams. It's just pictures of them. I, oh, how about you're out in the world? You're in front of. You could be oh, in front of the Grand constantly. Canyon, the Eiffel Tower. You're like, hey guys, I don't know if you noticed, but one of the greatest sights in the world is right behind you. You should take a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this. And then yeah. I don't know. I follow a, an account called Influencers in the Wild. Which oh apparently <laughs> people want to twerk everywhere and uh, twerk, twerk. There's a, a twerk. lot of twerking going on. <laughs> Why would there be any twerking going on? <laughs> you know, we live a sheltered life in the Microsoft world. <laughs> we do. Uh, what does uh, SE stand for? Nothing. No. Nothing. They claim nothing. Nothing. They claim so it doesn't stand for anything. Microsoft announced yet another version of Windows. It's got to be. Student edition, school edition, or student school edition. Is it Windows S? Is it uh, no, no, not S mode. Nope. No, Microsoft made fun of S mode as part of this introduction. They did. What? You see that in the fact? Yeah. No. They were like, "Oh, yeah. S mode." <laughs> I just, I don't know what we were thinking then. It, really? That was yeah. just <laughs> what? Really? But they keep selling it still. Like they ship some devices with S mode, <laughs> even with Windows 11. Right. <laughs> All that does is limit it. No, that's dumb. I, why would you even use that? I don't Microsoft know. Microsoft says. So yeah, I, I, SE is, I mean, it is the student edition, right? It's for it's for school, right? right? It's to compete with yeah. Chromebook, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. A word they never used, unsurprisingly, in announcing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, they should, though. They should. What they should I be know, doing is should. a side by side. Here are the costs. Here's the complexity. Here's the whatever. Yeah. And uh, that, that's how you sell something like that. They used yeah. to do that. Remember those Pawn Star ads where... Yeah. They would make fun of a Chromebook. And, uh, yeah, but Leo, you know what happened since then? Yeah. This is the problem. Chromebooks got really good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. Chromebooks work offline. There's all this stuff, you know, these like uh, myths about Chromebooks that people try to spread that aren't true anymore. And it's like, actually, guys, I'm, I hate to break it to you, but Chrome OS works much better on low-end hardware than Windows does. Of course it does. It's a simpler, smaller OS, you know? Yeah. So did um, they announce new hardware to go with SE? Yeah, um, they did both, right? <laughs> so they did. <laughs> they announced Windows 11 SE, and then they said, we have a lot of partners who are going to make these low-end PCs for the education market and install this on it. And we're going to make one too, Surface Laptop SE. By the way, let me, Which, let me ask you about that, Mary Jo. I know what mind. you're going to ask. Curious. I know what you're going to ask oh, okay. me. <laughs> okay. You're going to say why. Well, why? So, say, yeah, for example, my, what can Microsoft introduce into this ecosystem that would benefit everybody, right? Obviously, a, a right. low a low resources version of Windows that runs on low end hardware. Well, okay, got it. Uh, match yeah. up against Chrome OS, some type of low, uh, inexpensive and easy to use deployment management configuration software or service rather in the cloud mm-hmm. that matches what Google gives or, or provides to schools, right? Though, to me, yeah. those those are the investments Microsoft makes. Mm-hmm. We already have ten companies or fifteen companies or whatever it is making little $250 pieces of junk that have Celeron processes, four gigs of RAM, EMCC storage, and my God, yeah. a, a 1366 by 768, 16 by nine display. What did you get that yeah. like out of a, at like a Dell yard sale from eight years ago? And Which is not a touch screen, of course, right? Of course not. Unlike every so, other surface. <laughs> but that's the market, like we get it, right? The, the, obviously yeah. the education yeah. cash shop is fine. Why on earth would Microsoft tarnish the surface brand by getting rid of everything that makes Surface a Surface, except for the keyboard, apparently, and selling another yet another piece of junk for two hundred and fifty dollars. Why, why? Why? What is the justification? Why? For this? Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I mean, they. I mean, really. ex- no, I don't think they said why. I mean, they the 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 justification they give in 
the blog post is basically because we're Microsoft and we could design the hardware with the software, with the services, our, the experience is going to be great because we have the teams doing all of them, right? But that kind of flies in the face of them having OEMs, <laughs> right? <laughs> Where, hey, you're not supposed to have an advantage if you're the Surface team over at Dell and HP and Lenovo, right? Because like Microsoft. Windows is supposed to be for everybody. <laughs> right. Well, right. And. and Sur Surface PCs have had a cons consistently since Surface Pro 3 have had three by two displays, the yes. same exact PPI, I believe, on almost every single one of them, uh, meaning, you know, pixels per inch. Um, Surface Connect port for power, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this thing, and, and then they're made out of premium materials and all that kind of stuff. I, we understand yep. a, 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 an educational laptop is not going to be a premium device. Right. Although, by the way, four years ago, they tried to sell you <laughs> one of those, right? That's remember yeah. they announced Surface Laptop, right. the original. Yeah. At a at their previous, I think there was their previous education event. It was so this thing is it's a surface yeah. in okay. So it's a surface in name only. You know, yes. it's just another plastic computer. I, I will say yeah. the one innovation here, and this is something they should apply to everything they make, is this thing is incredibly serviceable. Uh, right. You can easily take off the bottom. You can access all the components. You can swap out everything in this, yeah. including the entire motherboard. You have to do mm -hmm. that if you're going to sell this yeah. to schools. For schools. Plus also yeah. IT, like they call it zero touch deployment, right? So right, mm -hmm. right. you have to do that for schools. But what does Microsoft's zero touch deployment and Intune based management capabilities cost? And how hard is it to use mm -hmm. compared to what Google offers for Chromebooks? I don't know. Right. I mean, that's not that's not really a rhetorical question. I actually don't know. So, well, you know what's funny? As usual at these Microsoft events, we read the blog posts. We got a pre-brief on this. And there were a lot of details that we weren't told until right. the FAQ came out on this stuff. And then we learned a lot of things we didn't know going into the announcement. One of those is... Um, Intune for Education is a requirement for these devices. It's not optional. You can't use a third-party product instead of it. You have well, to use They must have introduced a, a new lower-cost tier of Intune for Education. Uh, Intune so, for yes, education. they did, which is, I, I don't know if you all remember this, but on Windows Weekly a few weeks ago, I was talking about the SKU that Microsoft introduced for uh, Microsoft 365 A1 per right device. And when they introduced this a little earlier than this announcement and nobody could figure out who this was for or what this was. There were like no details on it except the price, $38 per device for a period of up to six years, which is great. Okay. But then right. everybody in education was like, who is this for though? Like, yep. like, like who would use this? Well, it turns out this is what this is for, right? And this yeah. skew, I believe this new um, A... Microsoft 365 A1 per device includes Windows, uh, sorry, includes Windows, yeah, it does, Windows 11 SE. It includes mm -hmm. Intune for Education. It includes all the Office apps that can be downloaded locally, okay. right? So oh, it's okay. it's so, a really cheap way well, to get good, this to yeah. students. So I used, <laughs> so to, in other words, I used to be on the board of a, a school that did a one-to-one -one laptop yeah. program, and right. they were spending a thousand bucks sure. per yeah. laptop. Um, yeah. So this is this is pretty compelling. It now, is. This is K through eight, by the way. To be clear, this is not right. high school. Is that um, because it's not powerful enough? Uh, um, I'm sure so that's part it, of it. I think they also want yeah. to wrap up the price for you know. This is a little confusing. The the software yeah. they advertise as being for K through twelve, and the laptop K through eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was looking at it. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Nope. They don't match. Okay, cool. <laughs> Did either of you look, get to I, play with this hardware at all? No. 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 I, so I, look, I don't have a problem with the K through eight thing. It is yeah. a, it's yeah. fair to say that someone that age is going to have much lower end needs than someone who's in high school. I, that's absolutely fine. And once you're in high school, you pretty much need a real computer. That's okay. I, that's fine. But so do you, is there a, um, does Microsoft offer educational institutions a, a way to spread these costs out over the lifetime of the device or something. You know, they have Surface Complete where yeah. it's something like that where you, maybe you pay them monthly or something for the entire yeah. fleet of stuff or. Um, so you know, I, I, don't I, I don't know about that, uh, but mm -hmm. here, here's what I do know. Education volume discounts are massive, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like when you, when you're talking like, Hey, we have a school system of like 500,000 people. They want that business, right? Like you're going to get a great, price from Microsoft on that. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah. So yeah. So tell yeah. me about okay. SE. What? How is it different from? Right. It has new. I got this one. It has a different wallpaper, Leo. <laughs> Excellent. It does. A very pretty bloom with many colors. That's one reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um. Your snap assist grids, you know how you have that new feature? Mm -hmm. I, I forget what the actual name is. You only have two choices with this, with this version, two different side-by-side -side layouts. You have no widgets, which is a to me, that's like, yes, no widgets <laughs> yep. like that. Um, <laughs> and the, the, when you open an app, it automatically opens single screen. So full, the whole idea apps. was to, yeah, yeah full yeah. screen. So they're trying to make this a simpler, cleaner, they also, say distra distraction-free environment, right? That's It's also goal. completely locked down, unlike Windows 10S, right? right? So yeah. basically this thing is centrally managed and the applications that your organization, in this case of school, uh, says you can have are the applications you can have. And that's it. It, it will right. run desktop apps. But you can't just go to the web and download it and install anything you want. You have to, and it, I think right. there's no Microsoft Store, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's right. right. There, that would make no. sense. You wouldn't want kids to be going downloading those fart apps or anything. Right. So <laughs> they right. so <laughs> so Microsoft's justification with no store is they say, you know what, the IT admins for schools didn't like the store, no, and they yeah. want to curate their own that's set of right. apps. They also right. didn't mention they're phasing out the store for education. I was just going to say, so. they, I was just going to make a joke about that. So they'll be yeah. using the Microsoft store for education then. Right. right. <clears throat> the, the curated apps thing, this was another thing in the FAQ that was interesting. So they said, by the way, you can install Chrome, you can install Zoom. And I'm like, oh, so you can install anything. No, you can't. There's well, six categories of things yeah. you can install, yeah. right? browsers, content filtering app, test taking apps, like there's six distinct things. Right. So you can't like, even if you're the admin, you can't install YouTube, right? <laughs> like there, I there's preventions like, on what you can install. I, I, this feel, this seems like it was designed specifically so, because I think there'd be technical people who would see this thing and say, you know what? I'm going to run this because <laughs> I like how. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I said that. It is and, you know, and, I said that like, to oh, Microsoft no, 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 no. when they briefed yeah. me. I'm like, could I run this? I bet it runs Notepad no. really well. Mm -hmm. I know. They're like, no, Mary Jo, you can't oh, run Oh, full this. screen. I it's hope you like full screen all the time. I do. I run I run most does. of my things full screen. Yeah, you don't want this, you don't want widgets while you're writing. No, no. I, I, I am a distraction free person. When I'm How on do something, you get I want to be Cosmo on news it. when you're trying to write a story. <laughs> <laughs> is this is somebody's asking an interesting question in the chat room. Is this a netbook? Yes. Yeah, sure. New I netbook. Mean, low end right? hardware. Yeah. Well, in the sense that um, net uh, Chromebooks sort of took over for netbooks, and yeah, yeah this absolutely this education at that price machines. Point. Might, yep. These are like I said, Celeron processors, typically four, but maybe eight gigs of RAM. Uh, I think it was thirty two, sixty four, let's say, or one twenty eight gigs of eMMC storage, which is slow. Non touch screen, super low resolution, plastic build. Yeah, this is a netbook. Hmm. Someone's asking in the chat room, um, iridescent ox, Parker. I know that name. <laughs> like, that's an interesting uh, yeah, code word. Will Windows 11 SE support Android apps? And my first thing is, of course not. But then I'm like, wait, if you want to compete with Chromebooks, maybe. <laughs> I didn't see right. anything about that. So I'm going to guess. Me neither. Well, the problem is, of course, it's not there now, right? So right. maybe right. in a, a version they release next year, maybe. But they didn't yeah, mention maybe. that at all. They yeah. did not. That didn't come up. Right. Mm -mm. Look, you're going to um, need more than RAM than that for Android apps, too. That's the other issue. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe their education Android apps, they could do the same thing, just limit the apps you can get. and Yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah. Full screen, yeah. it'd be kind of tough on an Android app. Uh, it would. Yeah, that would right? be. On most, true. a lot of them. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, very locked down. Um but not as locked down as Windows in S mode, right? Um, uh, well, I actually not I really. more locked down, really. You do. I would say, hey, let, let's put it this way. It's more configurable by the organization to be locked down. It's right. I, I, you know, it's designed to be not, locked down by your school, but it's right. not as locked down by Microsoft arbitrarily saying you only can install things from the store. Here's an right? interesting question from Mr. Huggy. Yeah. Okay. In the Discord, <laughs> um, okay. PWA apps? Could you run? 
Yes, you can. So they like, yes, that. that's interesting. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they specifically yep. did call it PWA. You can run Win32, UWP, PWA. All those choices are available mm -hmm. if your apps fall into one of those six categories. Um, right. right. Yeah. You can, yeah, Chrome. You can run yeah. Chrome. Um, right. You, well, or, which makes sense. Or I, I, you know. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's fine. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was kind of like a gotcha or a surprise in the end. Um, oh, they claim. The poor, okay, sorry. They claim, yeah, on the hardware. Let's talk about the hardware a little more because yeah. um, they're claiming 16 hours of battery life. No way, right? So right. I would guess eight at the most. Pro and that's probably impossible too, right? You, <laughs> so I, I didn't catch this. I, To me in education, especially at this age group, it seems like there's a distinction between uh, one laptop for each person, like Leo described at his school, or a lab of computers where kids file in and out and you want to blow them away between users. Which actually, right. if you think about it, you should just log out. That should do it. But that, other than storage, I suppose. Did they ever address this? Remember, you know, Terry Myerson infamously four years ago walking around with a USB key as if like this is how teachers are going to blow away machines between yeah. classes. And I was like, this is... No, that's when they were trying to figure out how to make. So the the thing you always hear from schools, you have to make it easier to set up, to maintain, yeah. and to wipe, and and you know set up for the next group of students or whatever. Um, right. Microsoft is maintaining that, especially because of COVID. You that schools aren't so keen on having people share machines anymore, and that people are okay. more inclined to have one student to. Because we all know that COVID is hiding under the keys on your keyboard. And as you exactly. type, it blows it up into the air. <laughs> right. So it's science. Exactly. You guys, it's science. Go to science class. You'll learn this. It's not true. It's I not am true. just, I am being the messenger here. I am being the messenger. <laughs> I heard it from Karen Rogers. I, oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, they did not make any changes in the OS to the way Windows is deployed, maintained, or wiped and reloaded. They did not. I asked them that. I said, is there anything you did in the OS that changed that? No. They keep saying, you can, but you can use Intune for education and you can couple it with regular Intune. And if you want, use Windows Autopilot and figure out how you want to do it as a school to set up, maintain, and deploy, I mean, redeploy uh, machines. No matter how easy this is, you've just described some form of IT staff. <laughs> yes. Yep. No, I mean, well, really. there's always I, I, somebody at a, at a school. There's, I mean, it may not be a, but the guy. The, the guy used to have a Commodore 64 at home who kind of knows a little bit yeah, about computers. It might be a parent yeah. in some cases. Uh, oh, boy, that's that's a lot of it's yeah. a lot to ask. Yeah, it is a lot. Yeah, it's usually it me. Yeah, of course, <laughs> or you. You're vaguely involved yeah. with tech, aren't you, Leo? Uh, what are you doing Thursday <laughs> afternoon? Can you run some cable? <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. I mean, most. I, w I won't say all schools have IT, but like bigger schools tend to have IT departments. Yeah, high right? schools do. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Um, sure. But grade schools, maybe not so much. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. But there'll be a, you know, I mean, I guess the district probably has somebody who can do it. Yeah. Look, uh, Nowadays, whatever they're doing, right? uh, this is so smart and uh, to do anything and to advance this in any way, because I really feel like they've been kind of sitting ducks for Chromebooks for several years now. They had yeah. to do and, something. Uh, they had to do something. Yeah, the thousand dollar Surface yeah. laptop and USB deployment was not the, the right. answer, <laughs> you know, no. Uh, no. four years ago. And then the only thing that's changed since then is that Windows doesn't. Windows the hardware requirements went up, you know, and Chromebooks continue yeah. to run great on low end mm -hmm. hardware. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is uh, enough for them to stave off the uh, assault? No, it, I know uh, Windows <laughs> Windows PC sales have tr plummeted in schools. Uh, almost direct well, one-to-one -one cars. Anyway, Chromebook sales have uh, fallen recently as well. So, well, yeah. It also depends, I, U.S. versus internationally, right? Like uh, in other countries, yeah. Windows has a much bigger share yep, yep. in the education market than they have here, yep. right? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's enough in and of itself because I keep feeling like the management piece still isn't simple enough. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's just yeah. me not being an IT admin for a school, but just based on what admins have said to me, no, they're I like, that's right. the key. The key is the I, management piece. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know enough about either side to say anything intelligent about it, but I think it needs to be simple enough so that non-IT schools without an IT staff could at least figure it out. Yeah. Because uh, you have uh, to reach you know, all schools, not is, just the ones that are rich enough. Right. 
And, you know, will, will the existence of a Surface branded device in this space make a difference? I don't know. Um, you right. know, some some people who are real Microsoft enthusiasts are like, oh, yes, a Surface. I don't care if it's just like the HP or the Dynabook or whatever, but it's a Surface, right? And I don't know. I, I keep wondering that- why Microsoft got into this market because... At first, the value prop for Surface was we want to make the premium devices, right? And then over time, when they started making Laptop, Laptop Go, it was more like, well, these are still premium in category. But this device, you have to say, is it a premium device or is it just like the other $250 PCs? It is no different from any of these other devices. That's the thing. I got the big uh, press release bundle from Dynabook, for example. And Mm -hmm. when you compare them spec-wise, feature-wise, et cetera, they're, they're identical. You know, they're the same machine. Yeah. And, yes. Yeah. And it, it, because, of course, you, you, they're sourcing, yeah. you know, the same components. I mean, it's just, what else are you going to do at this price yeah, point? Yeah, I know. You know, Kev, Kev Brewer at the start of when we were talking about this brought up something interesting in Discord. He said they have to, maybe it's because they have to show hardware is a, as a business at Microsoft that does everything that it would do if it were a separate hardware company, right? Like they want to show at some point, Surface is a profitable business because it is not right now. And if you could get the volume on this going, maybe, but... Uh, I, don't, I don't This is not... I don't, this doesn't seem like... I don't think they're going to make a lot of market. money on these, yeah. right? Like, I, I mean, they, no, it's, it's like meant to be a super low-cost you know? device. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Others are making them too. I, I mean, you know, Dell, they are. Acer. It, it established. Yeah. 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 All Every PC maker you've ever heard of, and then some you haven't. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So these are going to be in the education channel um, between now and the start of next year, you know, which is when the BET show is the big education conference. So you can expect to see the channels starting to fill up with these devices, not just from Microsoft, but from the third party vendors too, over the next few months. It's not for consumers. It's not for enterprises. They're not going to sell it to those people. It's just for education sold through education channels. And I presume for... Uh nine through 12 or whatever, and obviously college, yeah. Microsoft would point mm-hmm. you to the traditional service. Well, I noticed Product even on the, on the Windows 11 SE page, they they also, or rather in the uh, new laptop page, they also show the Surface Book Go. Yeah. Uh, so they, yeah. They, they're, they're kind of, there's a, it's a, that makes sense. It's a pathway. Yeah. It's a, it's right. a gateway yeah. drug. A gateway drug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's just, but this is like the, uh, the room of the Cadillac Cimarron or whatever it was called, you know, it's just a little Chevy with Cadillac badges on it. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what this is, right? The, the Chevy, yeah. the Cadillac Cimarron of PCs, like, um, it, it's, it, you can damage your brand by going too low market. It's a well, problem that. Remember the damage Mercedes the netbook did have. to, uh, yeah. the right. entire Windows. market. Yeah. yeah. To everybody. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's take a little break. We've got lots more to talk about. Paul Thorop, Mary Jo Foley, Windows Weekly is on the air. It's good to be back. Uh, our show today brought to you by an uh, old friend. You mentioned, Mary Jo, the last time you flew was to go to St. Louis to see WWT. We love worldwide technology. And Intel, WWT, is at the forefront of innovation. They work with clients all over the world to transform their businesses uh, Mary Jo, Lisa, and I uh, all went out to uh, visit them in St. Louis to see the Advanced Technology Center. What an amazing thing, this ATC. It's a research and testing lab. Started in one building, you know, a few racks, and now it's multiple buildings, miles of racks, it seems like. All the half a billion dollars worth of equipment from all the leading OEMs. It's a big investment. Why would WWT do this? Well, for a couple of reasons. Their engineers use the labs to, uh, you know, quickly spin up proofs of concept to do pilots for their customers to understand the technology better. I talked to a number of the engineers. I said, you got the best job, don't you? They love it. They love it. They get to play with all the new stuff. But here's the cool thing. <clears throat> the ATC is available for you as a, a WWT customer, which means you get to run Hundreds of on-demand and schedulable labs featuring solutions that include technologies like Intel's Xeon scalable processors, Intel Optane persistent memory, Optane SSDs, and others representing the newest advances in all areas of enterprise technology, multi-cloud architecture, security, networking, primary and secondary storage, 
data analytics, even things like uh, DevOps, AI, and so much more. This is a wonderful resource, not just internally for WWT, but now for you as a WWT customer. You can test out products and solutions in the Advanced Technology Center before you go to market. You can access, it's more than just the labs, you can access technical articles, expert insights, demonstration videos, there's white papers, all kinds of tools to help you stay up to date with the latest technology. And because it's virtualized, you don't have to go to St. Louis. Although if you get a chance to, have some fried ravioli, very, very good. But you don't need to. You can use, the, if you're a member of the ATC platform, you can use these resources anytime, anywhere in the world, 365 days a year. While exploring the ATC platform, do check out WWT's events. Uh, they do all sorts of fun stuff. There's a great community there. You can learn about uh, enterprise technology trends, hear the latest research and insights from their experts, whatever your business need. WWT, Worldwide Technology, can deliver scalable, tried and tested, tailored solutions, custom built just for you. Because WWT understands business, they bring strategy and execution together to make this new world happen. To learn more about Worldwide Technology, the Advanced Technology Center, to gain access to all these free resources, it's very easy. Just go to WWT.com slash twit. Create an account on the ATC platform and have at it. Great way to learn. WWT, Worldwide Technology, WWT.com slash twit. We thank them so much for supporting um, Windows Weekly. And we thank you for supporting Windows Weekly by going to that address so they know you heard it here. WWT.com slash twit. Page two. Win <laughs> <laughs> Windows and Microsoft 365. Oh, yeah. There's other stuff going on. <laughs> so, let's see. How, like, how do I bring you up to speed on this? So, last week... I missed a lot, I know. Yeah, Microsoft released a new Windows 11 build in the dev channel. So, they're testing some features that, in this case, they had promised before but didn't deliver in the original version. And that feature was, what was it? Uh, the ability to mute and unmute the microphone from the taskbar, which turned out not to be what they promised it was going to be. We'll talk about that in a moment. So today, just before the show started, they released another build to the dev channel. And again, they had a feature that they had promised, you know, back in June. And then everyone forgot about it. It's called, well, I'm going to call it Taskbar Share. I'm not actually, it's really hard to figure out what Windows 11 features are called, by the way. Microsoft refers to every one of these things by at least three or five different names. <laughs> um, and I remember, I, I, think I, I talked about to Mary Jo about this, like late in the summer. I was like, what, remember this thing? And, you know, what was, it was confusing what it was. So Taskbar Share is not what I thought. I thought it was a way to hover over, the way they described it was you would mouse over a button in the, or an icon in the taskbar, you get that thumbnail, and if that application could share something, there would be like a little share interface, but they never showed what it was going to look like, so I was like, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. what the point of this thing is. That's not what it is. <laughs> it's, that's not even close. So it seems it's, like it's, a good it's, idea. It's, okay. Yeah. It, the way, the, the point of it is you're in an app like Teams, and by an app like Teams, I mean you're literally in Teams, and as you're in Teams, you can roll over those icons in the taskbar, and then you can share that application with the people you're having a meeting with right now in Teams. So <laughs> just like that mute on mute thing, it only works in Teams. It's yeah. not a it's not a general share thing. It's literally just a feature. Well, it's a feature for, for Teams right now. For now, anyway. for, right, yeah. right. So there's an API in right. Windows 11 that will let Zoom or whoever else add this functionality to their app if they want. And you know, no one's going to. So it's basically just a Teams feature. And that's, it's okay. <laughs> like, it's okay. Yeah. But again, I, I just feel like a little clarity on this description back in June would have gone a long way toward avoid, avoiding confusion uh, mm -hmm. down the line. Now, this is not a big deal. I mean, the ability to share an app, it, I, I don't know. If you, if you use Microsoft Teams, you know that while you're in a meeting, you can share your screen. And while you're sharing a screen, you put an app full screen, you're basically sharing the app, it's fine. So this is a, a way to kind of just share one thing. Maybe you're giving a presentation in PowerPoint. Maybe you just want to show your web browser. It doesn't matter what the application is. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's just not what I thought it was. And there's a lot of that going yeah. around. So mm -hmm. part of me wonders, is it that we didn't understand what it was or have they scaled back what they're delivering? I think it's the latter. Oh, so. interesting. <laughs> I okay. That, like I, the microphone the thing. The microphone yeah, thing yeah. definitely. 
was that definitely just teams when they explained no, that? No, it definitely was, was not just be? teams. Well, right. Here's the that's problem. what I thought. So this is, I researched that one and I wrote a story about it. So let me just give the background of this because back in June, Microsoft talked about, depending on who you talk to, and this is the, this is the issue with communication. You get a different story from everybody. And I mentioned how everything yeah. has different names. This feature is either called Mute Unmute on the taskbar. It's called Mute Unmute. It's called Global Mute Unmute. It's called Universal Mute Unmute. It has all these different <laughs> names. But all those names suggest that if you're in any app that's using the microphone, you'll get an, uh, an icon on the taskbar, and you can use that thing as a toggle. It will globally turn off your microphone, which is a great idea. A it lot is. of, but not all, PC makers ship PCs that have a button right on your keyboard or somewhere on the, you know, right in the lap on the that area that will let you toggle the microphone on or off. It's a, it's a great privacy feature. Just like having a, a webcam shutter is a great feature. And some of them are physical where you actually have to move it with your finger. Some of them are a button and it does it for you. Um, these are, these are things that maybe should be built into the OS. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So that's what we thought it was. And then when they last week came, they're like, Oh yeah, it's going to work in teams now. Uh, it will work in Teams for consumer eventually. And then if third-party apps want to add it, there's an API in Windows 11. I was like, well, but, 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 but hold on a second. <laughs> API in Windows 11? You never said that. But here's the thing. They actually did say it. They only said it in one place. There was a fact about Windows 11 that was, or was not a fact. It was a thing about all the features and what their requirements were. And buried in this 30,000-word thing in the middle, it says what I just said. It requires an API, third-party apps mm. if they want to cry. But nobody talking to the press to my knowledge. And I looked, I looked for every review, yeah. every write up, every, I couldn't find a single instance where they told anyone that fact. They all presented it like a global slash universal mutant and mute. Mm -hmm. Sachin Adela was in a Wall Street Journal video the day of this announcement. Now he didn't say the words, they said it, but they described it. They zoomed in on it. They said, this is a universal mute and unmute switch on the taskbar and the person who was hosting the video said, I love this idea. Love this idea. Microsoft never countered it. Microsoft never came mm -hmm. back and said, oh, by the way, that's not, that's not what we're doing. And this is the communication thing, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. look, if this was just, we're talking about like kind of individual Windows 11 features. And I know people think, man, Paul, you're really, uh, really getting pedantic here. <laughs> if we met, that's my job. No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> this is. Also, you write books is, about this stuff, so you no, care it's not, more it's not, than no, most. It's not, it's not that. I'm not, I'm not like sniveling over this. This is, this is emblematic, I think, of a broader problem in the Windows group at Microsoft because they just can't communicate effectively. They had multiple people talking to multiple people in the press and they all told them different things. But none of them told them the truth. <laughs> the truth is, this is not universal or global. Apps have to support it explicitly, and no apps are ever going to support it. Mm -hmm. Why would they? Why bother? Yeah. Windows 8, Windows 11 is on 4.8 percent of computers out in the world right now. Who cares? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right now, nobody. Right, that's yeah. too small yeah. a percentage to care. <laughs> yep, yeah. oh, maybe over time. You know, I, I look. Here's my problem. Yeah. I like the idea of sharing from a uh, an icon on the taskbar, even if I never use this feature. I like the. I really like the idea of a volume, uh, or yeah. a microphone rather, mute, unmute. Right. Um, I would use that. I would use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that the, the thing they described in June is not the thing they're going to deliver months down the road, whatever right. that thing happens. Okay. That's what I thought too, because I, I'm, I, when I saw this feature described in the insider build, I'm like, wait, is that how this is going to be? I didn't think that's what that was. <laughs> Mm -mm. No, but but then, you know, I feel like the way Microsoft's talking to us about Windows is making this more confusing, right? Like, I feel like in the <laughs> old days, everybody would kind of yeah. get the same set of, like, ex explanations, briefings. And now the way they're right. briefing us is, like, everybody's kind of hearing different takes from different people at different times. And like yeah. what they tell me might not be what they tell somebody else. Right. And, and then you're like, no, they said right. that to me. And the other person will say, no, they didn't tell me that. And it's like, so who's right. And who I, knows? I keep <laughs> waiting for someone to come out and say, Hey, by the way, Paul, you're wrong. Um, XYZ publication that you've never heard of did get a quote from a Microsoft guy back yeah. in late June where he said, this is going to require an API. But I would say that just proves my point. That one guy said that to one publication and he didn't right. say it to anyone else. If you go to The Verge and Gadget, Gizmodo, ZDNet, yeah. wherever, how, pick your right. publication. This was right. not said. Yeah. 
No, because the whole way we found this, by the way, everyone who's listening, is we, uh, Paul asked me, what did they actually say when they announced it? So then I started looking too, right? And I looked in docs.microsoft.com, which is where I look for a lot of things. And then I found that one line about the API. I'm like, did right. they ever tell you this? And he's like, no, me neither. Okay. So, so <laughs> like, I took that yeah. and I went to the Wayback Machine and I looked at that page and I compared it over time. And yeah, that sentence yeah. actually never changed. Literally on June 24th, 2021, yeah. that yeah. line was in there. But that's the yeah. thing, you, you know, burying a detail in a fact, basically, I'll call it, yeah. which is a huge yeah. document, by the way. It is. And not actually telling anyone, but then touting it publicly yeah. as something else is classic Microsoft. And then they yeah. get all, you know, they're all confused when I complain about it later. Oh, Paul, there you are again. <laughs> you know, hitting the hornet's Here nest. Here he with a is stick. again. No, I'm just, uh, just say what it is. Yeah. Just say yeah. what it. Why can't you just say what it is? You know what? I keep hoping because I'm a glass half full kind of gal, most, <laughs> yes. mostly. That's true. Is anyway. now that we're only going to do one feature update per year instead of two, mm -hmm. maybe we're going to start seeing more consistency and clarity because there are going to be fewer features that show up, right? Like over time. Yeah, it's a hilarious, Mary Jo. I, don't, I, I know. I just um, don't. When I said it, I kind of laughed, but I was trying I just, to be optimistic. <laughs> the problem with that theory is even though there is only one version update every year, they're yeah. still going to release new features over the course of the year, right? Right. So there's multiple. Through cumulative updates. Yeah, it, it's right. humorous to me that this feature you're we're talking right. about today, not this uh, volume or the mute thing, but rather the taskbar share feature follows yeah. in exactly the same pattern. There was a lot less documentation and a lot less discussion about this particular feature. But again, miss. I can't even call it miscommunicated. It wasn't almost not communicated. So you hear yeah. like taskbar sharing and you, in this case, my mind goes to these assumptions. Okay, this is probably what this is. And then they announce it like, oh no, it's just for, it's just for Teams. <laughs> like, here we go. <laughs> okay, of course it is. Well, why do you just call it Teams features? They'll put it under a, you know, you're adding Teams to the taskbar. Talk about all the team stuff is what, the, these things should have all been included together. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I tried to keep that calm, but. You did. You wasn't mostly bad. Did. No you gong necessary. Yeah. No, no gong necessary. No. You know what? I, I said this while you were gone, Leo. Paul has been very tempered in some <laughs> responses lately in a way that I was like, who are you anymore? I, I don't even know It's you. important for me to communicate to everyone that I'm still as insane on the inside. So it's just... Um, <laughs> you, you know what you don't know, Mary Jo, is I constantly send private messages to Paul saying, ramp it up, ramp is that it, it, it up, ramp it okay. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Ramp there it up. There we go. We need more rants. There we go. <laughs> Actually, Steve Gibson got the Rant of the Week award last week. So, Oh, oh man, happened? did he? What happened? <laughs> you know, he got pissed off at Microsoft about something. I don't even know. Oh, tell me it was what it was. was. It, it wasn't no. that important. But, and he's Something's even a little. Wise, he's a, yeah, obviously. of course. And he's even, he's a little sure. <laughs> chagrined this week. <laughs> <laughs> still, still a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I like the rants every once in a while. It just shows, you know, we care about this. It shows stuff. we care. Exactly. Yeah. If you didn't care, you wouldn't rant. You would just be like, oh, I, listen, cares? I don't, I, I do care, but I, the problem I have with this kind of thing is I wish that the people responsible for this, this stuff behave like they cared. <laughs> You know, I, I that's isn't the it issue. funny like, that we care more than they do is ironic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like Sam Kinison and Back to School. It's like, man, that guy really cares about something. I wish I knew what it was, you know, or whatever. <laughs> you know, he's like he's like this insane ranting person. But um, no, I wish I wish they cared. I mean, they talk Microsoft. Yeah, it's not all Microsoft. I got to say, uh, Microsoft 365 as a as an organization, if you will, does a great job of communicating something that's a lot more complex than Windows. By the way, a lot more complex. Hmm. Uh, and they've also done, and I, we talked to Stephen Rose last week. We, I mentioned this, I think, on the air. Over the past year, especially, have done a much better job of reining in feature explosion, and then they just forget about it, and it never happens. And then some reader comes back to you and I and says, hey, remember, there was this random feature for Excel that they announced like 17 months ago, and then, hey, what's going on with that? You know, um, They're not perfect, but they're doing a much better job of announcing stuff that will actually be released sometime in the next, you know, say, six months. Uh, and that's although, a much more complex, I know they're not perfect. Although I'll <laughs> say, I think the reason they got 
clearer yeah. about that was because we were ranting, not just us, but other people as yeah. well, right? Because at one point they're mixing and matching everything into one giant yes. blog post. I'm like, when does any, any of this showing up? You can't even tell by this blog post. And they fixed it. They listened and fixed Last it. Last time I saw good. Jeff uh, Tapper or Teeper, whatever, I'm sorry, I can't yeah. pronounce his name, in person, I, I said, I don't. I don't understand how you keep track of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, he's I, like, you we release, don't. Yeah, he's like, we actually got it. No, it's, like, it's hard. No, I mean, you release, uh, they release uh, over 1,100 new features every month spread across uh, an enormous variety of products on yeah. the web, on desktop, uh, multiple platforms, yeah. on mobile, multiple platforms. Sometimes, uh, not sometimes, every time. They'll be like, here's a new feature for Excel. It's on the yeah. desktop and it's on the version for iOS. And you're like, guys, what, <laughs> what about the other what about one? about the other version? Oh, yeah, that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So then next month it'll be like, here's the one for the Mac. And then two months later, it's like, here's the one for Android. It's like, guys, what are yeah. you doing? You know, it's, it's, I don't even, I don't know how you keep track of that stuff. Okay. Ke Kev Brewer figured out what Steve Gibson was ranting about. He was ranting okay. about expanding Windows 11 availability to older machines, but they can't tell you which machines will work properly. Oh, with Windows on 11. that note. So I, you know, I review laptops. I got a yeah. Lenovo ThinkPad something something. I don't even know what it's called. It has like an e-ink screen, e -ink screen on the outside of the display yeah. lid because, you know, of course it does. And yeah. that machine was organically offered Windows 11 through Windows oh, Update. Wow. It just, yeah, it just came. Hmm. So like it, that's, they are, the, the after they expanded the availability of Windows 11, which is like yeah. a nonsense announcement to make because there's yeah. literally no idea what that even means. Um, I actually did get it on a computer. So huh. it, it's a, it is happening. I still have not gotten it on um, either of my two PCs. I, like I've gotten notes through Windows Update yeah. saying I will be eligible for it on <laughs> yeah, both. A, but Surface Laptop hasn't gotten it yet. <laughs> Laptop three, nope. That's and no, and the other uh, the HP uh, Ryzen base machine, nope. Also, no. Really? <laughs> That's crazy. Nope. The funny crazy. thing is, Mr. Gibson is the one who said never seven. He put out software right. called Never Ten that said uh, yeah. you can. I will never upgrade. So now he's complaining that he can't upgrade to eleven. It's very confusing to me. I don't. Yeah. You know. I think. Yeah. The problem is really that his bread and butter, uh, Spinrite, is des developed on and written for Windows. So he's really. Yeah. He has yeah. to. He has yeah. to support Windows, and that's. I, I can't remember if I talked to him or you told me this, but I know he was switched. I think I talked to him about this. He was switching to ARM-based uh, development, right? And, uh, or at least investigating it. He, you should talk to him, ask him about this. He, Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, he's Mr. x86. Yeah, he and is. He's writing and, assembly uh, language. This he, is a huge problem because, yeah. you know, the world's changing. And I think, I believe, he might have switching to, entirely. He might have to look at that. I don't, you know, I don't. Yeah, yeah. No, he, don't, he is. He definitely is. Down the road, it, I think Spinrite 7, which is, you know, a ways mm -hmm. off, would, would be compatible on Mac hardware too. So I guess, yeah, he'd have to yeah. write an ARM. Because he's all assembly language, you know. You which, can't. yeah, which is going to be a drawback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it isn't yeah, already. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's it's a double. It's a double-edged sword for sure. When you know, you look under iconoclast in the dictionary, and you, there's a picture of Steve <laughs> Gibson. He's just he, he dances, yeah. he marches to the beat of his own drum, know. which is why we love him. <clears throat> Let me take another break here because uh, we're we're rapidly getting through this rundown here. I thought we'd have more rants. <laughs> is what I thought. Oh, we'll throw some rants in. Come <laughs> on. Can you can you generate some more? Uh, some more I got an heat. Apple topic coming up. I could get, I got some, I got oh, some good. stuff. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, boy. It's, uh, uh, the, and Major League Baseball described it as illegal, but I got it. It's, in the, <laughs> it's under my hat. Our show today brought to you by Hover, my uh, favorite place. And I think most of our, I know Steve Gibson's favorite place for registering domain names. You know, it's always good to, you know, kind of have a, a good domain register on your back pocket. Uh, and I, I honestly, I think people often get disappointed when they go to the big other big guys by a variety of things. I think the thing that bugs me is the constant upsell. Uh, you know, the, the business model for some of the other guys is really to sell you stuff you don't need. Not Hover. Hover is the place to go to do one thing: register a domain name. Oh yeah, and if you want email, and I think that's a big one. In fact, one of my uh, constant, uh, I harp on it all the time on the radio show is instead of, you know, using at AOL.com or Outlook.com or Yahoo or Hotmail or whatever, you should have your own domain name and it should be so that, you know, you can have your own email. So there's two things they do, but hover really is about 
getting the domain name that matches you, your business, your blog. If you're a photographer, an artist, a portfolio, uh, of course, an online store. Uh, you could even use Hover just to make a more memorable redirect to your LinkedIn page. Uh, honestly, having custom domain names is affordable, it's easy, and with Hover, uh, it's quick and, and fast. And, of course, Hover has the best domain names and email addresses waiting for you. I love email at your own uh, domain because uh, if you're a business, well, honestly, you really need to have joesplumbing.com. You shouldn't have at AOL.com. That just doesn't project a good business image. Plus, you want control of your email. That's another thing I'm constantly hammering on. Free email. If we treat, if we think of email as important, you wouldn't say, well, I'm only going to go with whatever cell carrier is free. You know you'd get terrible service. Well, guess what? <laughs> you know, free email, is same thing. You, I think it's worth spending a, a little bit, and the good news is Hover email is very inexpensive, to control your email, to have somebody to call if there's an issue. Set it up with your own custom domain name with Hover email. You can have as many uh, mailboxes added to your domain as you need. When your domain renews, so do your, so do your mailboxes. The prices are great. Take a look. I mean, it's really reasonable. Plus, it's got webmail. You can use the email app you like. You can use Outlook or whatever you like. Uh, it works just great. Uh, but Hover, the whole point of Hover, I think, is the services you need, the services you want, and no BS. At Hover, you're a customer. You're not a source of data. You're not a business model involved selling you expensive services you don't need. I'll give you a good example. When you register a domain name, one thing you absolutely want uh, is who is privacy. Because the way domain names work is as the owner, the administrative uh, user on record, you provide an address and a phone number. Now, you don't want to use your address and your phone number for that. You want privacy. Hover includes who is privacy. That's no extra charge. That's part of the deal so that your, your, your private information is not made public. Hundreds of thousands of customers like me and Steve and many of our uh, Twit family use Hover uh, for our domain names. I own far more domain names than I should, but I, I, you know what? I find it useful. I have a Minecraft server. It's got its own uh, domain name. My email has a special domain whether you're a developer, a photographer, yes, I have leo.camera for my photos. Uh, got it through Hover, of course. A small business, twit.tv, got it through Hover. Hover is something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. Go to Hover, H-O-V-E-R.com slash twit right now to get you in the door. 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Hover.com slash twit. 10% off your brand new domain for a full year. Hover's a great place to go. Just everybody ought to have, because you're gonna. it's going to happen. Middle of the night, you're going to wake up saying, I need fancypants.com. I need it. And Hover's there for you. Hover.com slash twit. All right. Now. By the way, can I, can I just, add, can I actually add to my oh, here previous we go. Rant? rant. Let's go. Let's because go. Because I just, I just <laughs> happened to look, while you were doing the ad, I, I blocked out the article. I'm going to write about the share feature. In June... Microsoft described Taskbar Share as a feature where you can confidently share any file directly from the taskbar with just one click. And the demo showed a share feature in the preview pane that appears when you mouse over an application icon in the taskbar. <laughs> this is not so they, not what this is. They demonstrated is, it, yeah. but it doesn't work that way. That's not yeah. what this is. Mm. All right. I'm just I just you know, again I just yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you gotta. Okay. I'm we got to we got to come on. up with a gimmick for you like slowly I turned. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's Step exactly twice. what the Germans want you to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Just anything, a tagline, yeah, yeah. anything. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Rant of the week. Rant There's of the an week. opportunity there. <laughs> um Oh boy. Microsoft's killing OneDrive on Windows 7 and 8X. That's interesting. They could yeah. keep it going. I guess they don't support the operating systems anymore. So, well, 8x is technically well, 81, right? Is supported through oh, I think two two more years, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, Something like that. But, that. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. So I'm guessing there's two things involved here. Uh, one, it's probably the same client uh, that they have seven and eight, mm -hmm. and the second one is eight usage must have must be nowhere, right? It's through the floor. Yeah. So. I'm sure their attitude is like supporting this client on this one version doesn't make any sense. They can access OneDrive through the cloud, like yeah. barbarians. Yeah. 
That's what I do, of course. I never use yeah. OneDrive, the app. I use the cloud. Wow. But how do you sync up all your notepad meanderings? <laughs> That's not you nice. You just sync automagically. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> They sync automagically. Automagically, they're right where you left them. (laughs) They're right where I left them. (laughs) Mm. Um, Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I wasn't too surprised on the OneDrive thing. I'm like, yeah, they're going to start getting rid of these things because the end is nigh. (laughs) Yeah, the end is past. I mean, yeah, for some of those OSs. What do you think of? I thought this was really interesting. This new thing that Apple's doing with the they basically created. A, a business thing for Apple. I'm, a business thing, yeah, exactly. Business thing, Apple it's, for business. Uh, it's so it's so Apple for one thing. It's called so it's business essentials. It targets small businesses, and Apple defines that as uh, under five hundred, right? Yeah, under five hundred. Yeah, like so, us, like us. So we're the yeah. we're the target. Well, not okay, but does that exclusively use Apple hardware? <laughs> right? Yeah. See, we still so, have a lot of Windows stuff. Of course, uh, yeah. so you can't use this. No, well. It wouldn't solve all your problems, right? You, it, it's there's no part of this that are they going Windows after Windows. MSPs or are they going after IT less companies? Because I could see Russell yeah. saying, our our uh, our IT guy, well, our managed service person, saying, "Oh, good, I'll add that to my tool belt." Mm-hmm. Right. So this is, I believe, I would I would equate this to what Microsoft has for small business businesses, except Microsoft manages everything, right? So their cloud-based Intune service is kind of their gateway drug to reuse that term for their full-featured, you know, uh, PC and device management services up in the cloud. Um, This is kind of that, but it's very specific. It's for their customers, meaning people who only use their products, iPhone, iPad, Mac, that's it. Um, it's funny because the, the it's not funny, but the uh, pricing seems reasonable. You hear it starts at two ninety nine per employee per month. You're like, wow, that's uh, it's not that that's for kiosks, <laughs> and that's like one device kiosk only. Um, Six ninety nine is the cheapest one for employees. And I think the next tier is probably twelve ninety nine, but you can get up to you know two terabytes of iCloud storage, which, which includes device backups, which Apple does a good job at. 24-7 support. I don't know what that's like. And then up to three devices. And I think the assumption there literally is iPad, iPhone, <laughs> Mac, right? Like like that's the, you know. But it does employ onboarding, um, you know, the back-end uh, management type stuff. I, mostly it's, actually mostly, I'm not even sure what it is mostly. I, th- I think the idea here is that the pandemic happened. Um, people aren't coming into offices. You need a remote uh, onboarding experience, which everyone is now offering. And my, Apple has realized, and I think correctly, there are a lot of small businesses where, like, they're just Apple guys. You know, I think this is there's a part of the market that will this will be appealing to. For sure. Yeah. Not me, <laughs> but you know, it's funny because Apple, I think, for a long time has seeded the business market. Just said, yeah, we, that's not our market. We got pros, creative professionals, uh, yeah. programmers, developers. Uh, yeah, but, you know, home users, they, yeah. but we don't we don't really have a place in business. Um, well, that they do, but why really, shouldn't they? Right? I mean, why I, shouldn't? But they, they do. Yeah. I, I mean, I would yeah. argue they do have a place yeah. in business. I mean, I, I, their failing will always be that they won't ever extend this to Windows PCs, Chromebooks, or anything else. They just won't do that. Oh, of course, or Android not. phones. That's they will never they do that. Do. No. Yeah, and that so. is a drawback because uh, to these days everybody's in a heterogeneous environment. They're not. Mm-hmm. You know, right. that's not right. that's not that's not the real world. Nobody's right. all Apple. I, as much I don't as think, Apple would like to think that. I don't think Google, Microsoft, even Amazon or whatever has anything to worry about here. No, no. <laughs> no. You know who has uh, something to worry about is companies uh, like uh, Jamf, who specialize yeah. in small business support for Mac, and it's been a very small market. Yeah, but it's been and a by the way. Apple, in a very kind of antitrust sense, has good ins- insight into how uh, popular those kinds of solutions are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's somewhat predatory, but it makes sense for them to say, hey, uh, this is the right time for this kind of offering from us. I think they'll do pretty good with it. I also think, I mean, they're offering on-site repair, which is cool, 24-7 support. But I wonder if the security and privacy aspect that I, apple's really doubled down on uh, might apply that's, here that's, no? yeah that's the selling point and they they 
they, if you should watch the video. It's interesting. There's a, they're, they're speaking to small businesses. And one of the things they say, it's just so goofy, but it's perfect. It's perfect. It's so Apple and it's perfect. They say, you know, you can save a lot of money if you trust your employees to bring their computer or whatever into an app, local app store. They can fix it. Them, they can get it fixed themselves without any intervention. Your friend save you a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. yep, yeah, just what true. you want. No, it's 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 true. It's it's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so is the now it's not here yet. It's coming in uh, the spring of next yeah, year, early twenty twenty. Is the yeah. pricing comparable with whatever? What is so? What is Microsoft's comparable uh, offer? They probably have many tiers. Actually, it's a little complicated because yeah, yeah it's yeah. a combination. Of into see what what's not explicitly stated here is Apple has um, apps for productivity that are bundled for free with their devices. Right. So they don't really have to include that into a cost because everyone just mm. has that. And the assumption is you're bringing your own productivity apps, but you're using iCloud storage. So some people might still be paying for Microsoft 365. Some people will use the Apple stuff. But the uh, their goal is you're using Apple storage on the back end because you're paying for it. Right. And you get, um, and you get a lot of storage. I mean, yeah, it's up to two. Yeah. Two terabytes. Good. Yeah. Um, Microsoft, you would have to look at two different things. So it's the cost of Intune and then the cost of Microsoft 365. And, and in both cases, multiple tiers and different pricing schemes for different markets. And uh, it's kind of hard to compare. But uh, like I said, if you're all Apple... God help you, you're not listening to this podcast. Who cares? I'll make fun of you. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, this is, if you're all Apple and have no desire whatsoever in, in, in the rest of history to ever not be all Apple, um, this is probably fine. It will probably be fine. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the, most of the world needs a slightly more nuanced needs yeah. than this. Two ninety nine per device per month for a single device. Uh, Multi-device plan is uh, three <coughs> devices per user, 200 gigs of storage, six ninety nine a month. Yeah, and More then twelve ninety nine. Twelve ninety nine. It gives you two yeah. terabytes. Yeah, uh, that's for not power bad. Users. I mean, the, uh, Microsoft three sixty. It's not really. It doesn't really work out this way. But if you get the downloadable apps, we're talking about it's about ten, ten, twelve bucks a month. It's about it's right yeah. in the same ballpark. And I think that's only one terabyte. Yeah, but as you point yeah. out, you're you're buying uh, an office. Suite, which this yeah. doesn't include this because you already have well it, or of, if you want to use apple stuff it comes for free like i said right. on all of the devices so you get that on mac ipad and iphone anyway um, yeah. yeah you get it you get it for free i mean you, and i uh, you could make an argument that anyone any business looking at this plan is like oh we're obviously using pages mm -hmm. and numbers right and whatever the other they'd have to be that. yeah which i doubt any yeah. business does <laughs> excuse me but these are small businesses right? right i mean this is this is you know there probably are almost no businesses using Chromebooks, but once you have this kind of system in place, you can make a, a pretty good argument to businesses where you have certain uses that could get by with a $400 Chromebook, yeah. save everybody a lot of money, and they're just using docs up in the cloud or whatever it is with workspace. Um, it could work. It could work. It could happen. I'm not going to test it. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> it that. Work. Yeah. yeah. In certain quarters. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Some of the dark in the corners of the web. <laughs> Down by the I river. Feel like, I feel like Microsoft's so like far away from this model now with Satya Nadella, right? Like they're like, hey, we don't care. Run a, run an Android phone, run an iPhone. We don't care. Yeah, like, totally mix and match whatever device. you want. Yeah. <laughs> Do well, they? How good. do they accommodate Macs in the in the Microsoft world? Do they they, uh, they manage Macs and went into it just yeah, like they do any other device? Okay. Uh, Mac, yep. yep. Full 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 powers there. It's Okay. Yep, they do everything. They're very, they're agnostic. And this is, uh, we talked about this, I don't know what everybody was showing anymore, but I, I mentioned this to somebody, you know, my, one of Microsoft's big strengths is they meet their customers where they are and they're serious about it. If you guys yeah. are using Android or iPhone or Macs or iPads or whatever, yeah, yeah we'll manage that. They manage it all. Yeah. In the old days, you could see an old Microsoft introducing a plan like this. I said, hey, if you only run Microsoft products, we'll we'll give you this small By business the way, plan. That old Microsoft right. product was called Intune back in the day. It was called Windows yeah. Intune, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, it was yeah. PCs, but then it turned into devices and it got more ahead of genius. Right. Time. All right. And then yeah. we came into the modern world and now we yep. realize it's a Microsoft heterogeneous got a wake up world. call. They Apple do. doesn't have to have a wake up <laughs> call. They have a market of, you know, billion plus users. They can sell to that yeah. market. That it's yeah. They're, they're, Apple's future revenue stream is how much more money they can get every month from X number, X percent mm -hmm. of their customers. So this is right. another way to add to that. Yeah. Yep. I think it's, I think it's smart. I just, 
If it, here's how you know it's successful. If they ever let in Android devices, <laughs> you know, or Windows, and you know, they'll <laughs> no, not gonna, that's not that's not their thing. Nope, yeah. that's not their DNA. Nope. nope. All right, let's talk about uh, for uh, it's developer time. I think we this is, is good. We could have a, a whole new developer segment yeah. to go along with the Xbox segment. <laughs> Leo, you missed the developer controversy last week, too. What was that? Two of them. What? Oh, Leo. What? You missed so much. Oh, what happened? It's, it's, there's two things, right? The Nat Friedman and uh, the hot oh, yeah. reload problem. Right. Nat Friedman quit. You may have seen that. He's no longer the CEO of GitHub as of mid-November. Oh, I didn't see that. Yep. Huh. Yep. He's going back to his startup roots, which could mean he's going to be a VC or work at a startup. We don't really know. It was kind of vague. But what, what's the controversy there? What's the problem? Right? The guy wants to leave. What's the problem? Nothing. He There's announced no it three days before they announced uh, uh, that six at Visual yeah. Studio 2022. Here's the timing idea, was odd. Wait until January. You're, you're going to take all of December off anyway. Just, right. <laughs> just wait until January. Why would you announce this odd. right before? Yeah. So well, they weird. had just had had the GitHub Universe event, which was their big yeah. event that they do every year. So I guess he was like, yeah, we're done. I don't care about .NET. What about it? All right, let's move on. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. No, but this yep. week was um, well, the on, .NET the other conference. We, wait, wait, wait. We got to oh, stop. Sorry. We can't even talk about that one. What was it? No, Leo will enjoy this. Um, this is going to so, be a long rant. Get ready. No, no. This, no, I actually, I honestly, uh, well, maybe. So <laughs> Microsoft has been working on .NET 6 all year, right? Yeah. Um, some parts of it have been delayed. For example, we know .NET MAUI has been delayed until next year. It's not going to be right the next version of Xamarin. Not surprising there. Um, one of the features that they announced at Build this past year was something called Hot Reload, which is something you see in developer environments everywhere. Flutter has it, et cetera. And it's the ability to edit the code of a running app while you're debugging it and not have to relaunch it and then re-debug it, so to speak, to go see what the changes are. It, it, it actually... Ch makes the changes in real time. Yeah, we've had now, that typically, in Lisp since 1956, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's a brand new feature only nice. Microsoft has. Love it, love it. And uh, <laughs> so uh, you would imagine, I mean, it's funny you say Lisp, because I, I would think most people who are going to use Hot Reload are using an IDE of some kind, right? Yeah. Uh, Visual Studio, the full-blown yeah. version, maybe code, whatever. Yeah. Android Studio supports it, of course. Um, but Microsoft actually, uh, you know, back from, I don't know when it was April, May, was going to allow hot reload support in like for .NET command line applications. So if you were on Linux or something, you could take advantage of hot reload in any .NET uh, workload or whatever. And throughout the year, they've been releasing various milestones and hot reload was always there. And then on the eve of the launch, there's a big blog post, a typical Microsoft, you know, unfortunately it was our buddy Dimitri who I think who wrote this one. Was it Dimitri? Yeah. And really long blog post. Here's all the stuff going on. And then this little sentence at the bottom, oh, by the way, uh, Hot, Hot Reload's not going to make it for a .NET 6 command line. And the open source world exploded. <laughs> and it was like, oh, see, that's I, we knew you guys were going to screw us over. We've been waiting for this moment. You can't trust Microsoft. Here they are again. It's like, guys, I, how, many, how many people on earth would have used this feature? And Microsoft just didn't get it to the point where it was, you know, they thought it worked very well. I mean, I... I Every indication it was probably just going to ship as part of .NET 7. But, you know, they they, they apologized. They scaled. They said, all right, well, fine. We'll put the piece of John Conrad reload thing you want so bad in there. But, <laughs> sorry. I mean, you know, I, I, think, I think the mistake that Microsoft made, in fact, I'm pretty positive, aside from just canceling it, was they could have left the code for it up because it's up in GitHub, right? They could right. have just left it there. Yeah. but not included it in .NET 6, but they actually deleted it. And people were like, oh, you can't do that. Yeah. And um, anyway, it caused a big stink. So uh, good news, Leo. Um, .NET 6 hot reload is available. So if you want to use that from a <laughs> command line, go to town. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense in um, environments like Smalltalk and Lisp where you, um, when you add code, it becomes part of the image. Which, mm -hmm. And you can save it, and you can the image is running in memory, and so you can modify code, running code. It's actually yeah. a really nice way to work, but I yeah. don't know how much sense it makes in .NET. I, or well, here, so if you think about, uh, you don't have to know anything about coding to understand. You're in a coding editor that's part of an IDE. You've launched the application either on the local system, on a, a, in an emulator maybe, or on a attached device, or whatever it is. You know, Who knows? Because it could be all kinds of different apps. But 
they're like, oh, I made a spelling mistake. Something really simple. You're like, oh, that the header there is wrong. And you change it in the editor and then you just control S and it changes right in the app. It's awesome. It's just, it's just, it's like, yeah. why hasn't it always been like this? You know, right. it's, mm-hmm. actually it's a hard computer science problem as it turns out. So, um, <laughs> but that they solved and, and, and Flutter has this. I mean, every, lots of environments have it, but it's a, it's an important feature. It's a very modern software development feature. And, um, I don't. I just have a hard time imagining not doing it in an IDE. That's all. That's my right. You know, right. Yeah, we do it in uh, in um, small talk. You do it, your small talk is an environment, so it's like an IDE yeah. on steroids. And then in Lisp, you have a sure. REPL running, and yeah. Uh, so yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a really nice way to code. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. Once you yeah. see it, you're like, oh my god, I, <laughs> you know, because yeah. in the old days, you'd have to shut everything down. Yeah, you have to go recompile back, each change, time. Save, recompile, test it, link, recompile, test run it, it again. It kind of yeah, has to spin up ass. again. It's, yeah. yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. This this so. way, you can examine the stack. You can examine everything. Yeah. You see how it is. Change, say, well, you know, that should be a six. Yeah. What happens if it's a ten? It's fair. It's yeah. a great way to work. That's uh, awesome. Once yeah, you get used to it, you kind of want it. And I can see why people would be upset if Microsoft said, no, you don't. But the issue I have with this is, I feel like. The open source community as a whole is like never going to trust Microsoft. It, it almost yeah, doesn't yeah. matter how much they do. It doesn't matter that they are perhaps the world's largest contributed open source today or whatever they are. It, I feel like there's some contingent of this crowd waiting for this moment where they're like, see? Told see? you. Told knew, you. Knew they do that. Yep. Called yep. it. Yep. You're like, guys, yeah. it's been 17 totally. years. But can I just <laughs> say, that's how it is. The open source community is notoriously yeah. cantankerous. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's there's just, a big it's fight now. System 76 laptop maker only does Linux laptops in a big battle with GNOME desktop. And oh my mm-hmm. God, it's like, come on, guys, yeah. you're on the same yeah. team. Let's just stop it, knock it exactly. off. Exactly. But this is yep. this is how it is, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so did you? Is there anything more to say about Visual Studio uh, 2020? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Let's there hear is. It. Let's hear it. it it's out as of this Woo-hoo. week, Visual Studio 2022. Yeah. With hot reload support. Woohoo. Woo-hoo. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So Visual Studio 2022 is the first 64-bit version of Visual Studio. Nice. Um, really? The first? Yeah. Wow. Huh. I know. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. The very first one. Mm-hmm. Um, it uh, includes a lot of editing, debugging improvements, um, a whole laundry list of features, right? And it's immediate, immediately available for download as of this week, as is .NET 6, available for Windows, Linux, nice. Mac OS. Um, so yeah, this was a big developer week for Microsoft. Announcing these two things are now generally available. And that's why Paul was saying it was a little odd timing for Nat Friedman to be leaving yep. GitHub. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, .NET 6 is oh, a... Yeah. Oh, good, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, here's here's all our great developer stuff we're doing. Oh, yeah, and the guy running GitHub is leaving. Yeah, so. Well, plus the, this open source um, controversy, it's like GitHub, right? GitHub yeah, is maybe right. the shining example of Microsoft doing right by open source. And yeah. the guy running GitHub leaves right before, right after that happened yeah. and right before they announced yeah. the pro- release the product. It's like, yeah. God, dude, it's got to be like, come on. It was, <laughs> just it was wait surprising. A just hold on. Wait, just wait a couple of I months. know, just yeah. a week, a week, just one week. <laughs> <laughs> But the other yeah. thing is, you know, uh, .NET, Microsoft has been working toward this open source version of .NET for years. And, mm-hmm. and .NET 5 was going to be it. And it was like, okay, now it's not yeah. that, that .NET 6. Um, but there are still major components not available, including, right. like I said, .NET MAUI, but also the next version of Visual Studio for Mac, which at this point is kind of like, why yeah. does this product even exist? Like we have Visual Studio code. Yeah. And it, like, what would be, what's the, what's the expectation of people... I, I suppose if you can create .NET MAUI apps with Visual Studio for Mac, it might make some sense. But mm-hmm. I don't, I don't quite understand yeah. why that product exists at this point. Um, no. And then the the other thing I thought they were going to announce this week, which they didn't, was Project Reunion. You know, the Windows uh, SDK oh. was available, but no, not yeah, this yeah, week. Yeah. I, I don't think they ever actually said it was going to be simultaneous with Visual Studio Whoa. launch. Um, <laughs> We're going to release it in November, but later in November. <laughs> no, they, they said Q4. Okay, we're running okay. out of Q4 now, guys. Like, everybody yeah. at Microsoft goes away in December. So, like, we're kind of running out of time, right? <laughs> uh, 
That's right. How did I forget about that? Yeah, the Windows App SDK. Um, yeah, the Windows App SDK yeah, for, is, right. the re, is the real name, right? And, right. I, you know, again, I don't think they promised that it would be this week. And then when I looked at the Visual Studio notes, I'm like, oh, wait, there's some connection with the next version of Visual Studio, the 17.1 uh, release it's in preview, but I'm like, uh, so wait, are they going to have to wait for that to show up before they announce this? No, I wouldn't think yeah, those two be. things would be dependent, right? I don't remember the exact version either, but you know, .NET Maui has been in development for so long. Like, I think they're right. on preview ten. <laughs> you know? They are. They're, and the, yeah, and it's it, been around it, for a while. <laughs> it's not going to ship until I think close to the middle of next year. I think next the year, second quarter. Right. I think yeah. Right. Yeah. So anyway, listen, anyway, it's, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, I guess they'll still be. Project Reunion still will be coming later this year, as far as the roadmap on GitHub indicates. Okay. And .NET 6 is a long-term servicing release. Servicing release, yeah. Uh, three years, I think, of support. Yes. Okay. It's a big one. Uh, yeah. Rebranding for Channel 9. Yeah. Mm. This is a little surprising. Um, Channel 9, you know, the Robert Scoble created uh Scoble property. created Channel 9? He was on this creation team. There were like I'll six people. I didn't realize they credit that. with it, but Scoble was the one. I remember this. It was well, he like decades ago. Yeah. yeah, he 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 came to me. I think I was working at PC Week at the time, maybe, and he said, hmm. "I've got this video thing that you're going to be really interested in. I'm going to go <laughs> around with a camera and I'm going to interview yep. just random people at Microsoft and not have PR involved." I'm like, "Oh, good luck, that's, dude." By the way, he that's exactly it. what he did for a little while. And uh, it is. I remember he did but that wasn't Channel, channel like Nine, that. was it, or was it? Yeah, that, that was, was Channel Nine. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. he was working for Microsoft. When he was yep, doing he was. it. Wow. That's right. Right. Yeah, he'd show up in um, people's offices and be like, hey, let's talk about whatever you're working on. Yeah. Because he had like, done that. You? He'd made his name yeah. doing that before then, just on his right. own. Well, that's why he right. got to Microsoft. They were like, got we want it. we want got this it. here, you know? Yeah. yeah. This is back um, in 2004. Yeah. And wow. so they had a very yeah. active Channel 9 site. Uh, you guys probably remember this. Like, there was a coffee house. I loved it. There were yeah. all kinds. I thought yeah. it was a great I idea. used to get so oh, many story tips off this sure. thing. It was sure. great. Professional <laughs> uh, video organization, like a TV show yeah. or uh, a yeah. TV studio. Any big Microsoft event like Build or Ignite, you'd go. Uh, Channel 9 booth would be right there in the front lobby when you walked yep. in the door. They'd be doing live shows the entire time. Yeah. The people yeah. there are fantastic. Uh, yep. And... Yeah, there's a little bit. So <laughs> I just feels a I little know. political so they're gonna, to me. What they're going to do, just so everybody's on the same page, they're going to yeah. take most, they say most of the Channel 9 content, and they're going to migrate it over to the Microsoft Learn portal. So they aren't promising all, um, which has some mm. people panicked because they're like, oh. oh, what if it's the one video I really want yeah. or whatever? Right. And so uh, the walking cat was saying on Twitter, he's like, anybody who has a video you want on Channel 9, you better go get it right now before... That's gone, that's right? Good yeah, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, they're going to migrate it over to the Learn Portal. And in some ways, this is going to be better uh, because then you'll have everything together in one very nice looking website. Not, you know, Channel 9 wasn't the best looking website. It was just kind of amateur-ish. <laughs> um, sure. Searchable by the same search engine. There he is, see? He's going to take a walk. To what are you going to do today? Did you forget your ID badge today? He's going to yeah. take, take a walk. <laughs> That's Robert Scoble. We're going to take a walk to Steve Ballmer's <laughs> office. Forget your ID badge at home. This is 2005. This is how primitive <laughs> into the building? it was. Well, I remember this was the Longhorn days, and I remember he used to walk around yeah. and talk to people about Longhorn. Uh, yep. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that's Rocky shooting. <laughs> Steve, uh, Steve Ballmer's office. He's a great cool. photographer. Um, so let me... Uh, my, my concern here is that this reminds me of the build versus PVC battles. And is this, I don't know. I'm just, this know, seems like. I know. What was great was about this, it was very underground. It was very underground and you felt like you were getting an inside look. Yeah. It didn't yeah. feel like corporate marketing BS. Right. 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 And right. I think it's a, it's a, I mean, I understand executives hate this because they don't control it. Yeah. And and it's not polished. And no, I'm but sure I, I Wagner think this Edstrom made said, "Well, you got it," which was very important. But it made him look human. Yeah, you know, it made, Microsoft was so open on this stuff compared to every other big tech company. Like, well, this is gotta, there are people could have this blogs, is, right? Yeah, yeah. This is Jim Alchin era. Like, um, it's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah 2005 for this uh, video. Now this is still yeah. on. Uh, 
uh, Channel, Channel 9, 9, but you right. might want to download yeah. it because I doubt this will mm -hmm. be. This is like the kind of thing they're going to kill right away, I would imagine. You don't know, though. We don't know what they're going to kill or keep. That's what people it's so think. important to keep the history stuff. I, I don't. Oh, God, this is invaluable. Yeah. yeah. Invaluable. No, and there stuff. are so many really great interviews with like a lot of the um, distinguished engineers yeah. at Microsoft Tech yeah, Fellows, yeah, yeah. many of whom have passed on. Like they're not even alive, right? Yeah. So there's so much good content right. up there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I would hope that the uh, uh, Internet Archives would just get all this stuff. I bet they already have it. Uh, right. And yeah. just make it and just keep it because it's history. It's it is. history. Yep. It is. Uh, and it did, I have to say, it got more corporate. Of course. It did over time. And yeah. less, uh, for that reason, I think less. I can assure you it's not going to get less corporate over at Microsoft Learn, but that's right. um, yeah. okay. Is I mean, Learn, look, uh, still good. Is Learn the LinkedIn thing? Uh, no, Learn is um, no. kind of where they're. Um, uh, amassing all different assets about training, education, not just LinkedIn, but like anything. Yeah. Like any Microsoft kind of like, Docs is oh, part of it. Right. That. Okay. Docs okay. is there. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I was trying to think, were we ever on Channel 9? I think we were on a few I of those. Oh, shows. I were. You were oh, definitely, definitely on. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Isn't definitely. that where the bean bags were knocked over or anything? Oh, yeah. That probably was, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're yeah. in there in the archives. Here's, uh, here's Mr. B. <laughs> Thanks. Talking to, to Skull. I mean, imagine the CEO of a company. I, I, they just their image yeah. is so controlled these days. You don't you don't get this right. kind of you stuff. You couldn't just walk into Sacha's office and no. do this. Let's just no. say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm pretty historic. sure Sacha exists as pure light at this point and wouldn't be available. For <laughs> <laughs> anything yeah. Video. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's great. I. Uh, yeah. I had forgotten. I remember now that you mentioned it. I'd forgotten Scoble did that. Uh, that was a big yeah. deal. Yep. Big, big deal. It yeah. was big. Good it was creation. Really big. And it's yeah. a shame. Here we are 15 years later. Be shame to lose it. So let's hope yeah. it, it gets moved over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm seeing a, a, a comment from that era saying, that was awesome. I have to say Channel 9 has become the most entertaining place I go to. That was <laughs> That was hysterical. You're not going to hear that no, <laughs> no. ever no. again in a Microsoft no. uh, interview. Well, do you, I, you know, do you guys it, remember for, why they called it Channel Nine? No. By the way, wow, this is amazing. No. Yeah, so United Airlines story. Channel Nine, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is the cockpit where That's you can cockpit. tune in when yeah, you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Scoble or whoever came up with the name, I don't know if it was him, had the idea like, what if we could just let the employees talk to people through video unfiltered? Right. Wow. I didn't know the yeah. story until the, Brad told me this. I, I actually didn't yeah. know this. I uh, yeah, yeah, that's an amazing story. So uh, Scoble got into podcasting shortly after and was never heard from again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the shower. I was just I was uh, taking a shower before the show and thinking about Robert Scoble, um, <laughs> as one does. Poor Robert. He said so many things. That's the thing he's going to get remembered for. Is that well, picture of course, Michelle? Know, right? the, Welcome to history with the. Uh, with the Google glasses. The Google glasses, right? It's always yeah. the way, right? Yeah, Your worst moment yeah. is what you remember yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. right. um, uh, okay. Okay. Channel 9. Do they, does United still do that, Channel 9? Can you still know. listen to the cockpit? I don't think so. I, I believe you can. I believe there was a move to kill it because I was looking this up I when I was writing my that. post. And they kept it, I believe, because it people was, wanted uh, it. So the, the flight that we took home from Paris, you know, you get a screen and it has like you can see on the map where the plane is. Yeah, I love This that. allowed you to see multiple camera views. They have cockpit yes. view under the cockpit. Yeah. It must over have been a 777 or a 787. Mm -hmm. it, was a, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that fun? And you can say, I want to watch us yeah. take off and you can see the nose. Yep. I yeah. mean, it's oh, pretty it's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think to hear Channel 9, you got to get those hollow tube yeah, ear sets exactly. and plug yeah, yeah. it into the hole on the, your with seat. The two, it, you know, with the two connectors, not one. <laughs> remember that, you, had you, know? a, you had a dial yeah. and you changed nine. There the were movies. You, you, if you're old enough, you have headphones that came with the airline yeah. adapter that yeah. had two prongs, yeah. right? Yeah. We've come a long way. We've come a long way from that. <laughs> I wonder. It, it was fun to listen to, uh, to you know, the air traffic control chatter and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. No more fun. Time for Xbox. Right. Let's get serious no about this with Mr. <laughs> Paul Thurot. It's not that much going on, but there is some big stuff happening. So next week is the 20th anniversary of Xbox as a platform. And so because it's, uh, you know, pandemic, blah, 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 whatever, it's going to be a virtual event, but Microsoft is going to have an event. 
on November 15th, where they'll celebrate this anniversary. Um, you know, speaking of how times have changed, right? This thing will be available with subtitles in approximately 25 different languages. There'll be an American Sign Language and audio description version <laughs> via the Xbox YouTube channel. I mean, it's crazy, right? It's just the world has come a long way. So that's happening next week. Um, I didn't get a chance to write this up, but while we were doing the show, I got an email from Microsoft about how they're also going to do something on November 15th with uh, related to Halo because Halo oh. came out with the original Xbox, yeah. right? And Halo, the new Halo game is uh, debuting the next month, I guess. But um, there will be some Halo-related festivities around this event as well. I'll have to look into that more closely, but that's cool. Um, and then, let's say Wednesday. So I think yesterday... I think it was yesterday, Forza Horizon 5 launched. Last week, they had kind of a soft launch for the people who bought the most expensive version. And I think it was yesterday that it went it went broad. This one's really interesting on a number of levels because this game is available on Xbox One, X and S, PC, Steam, and Microsoft Store. It's available via Xbox Game Pass on both of those, plat on Xbox and uh, PC. And it's available for streaming over Xbox Cloud Gaming as part of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Look at me rattling all that off. <laughs> um, it is officially the biggest launch in Xbox Game Studio history. Um, and, they, and I think, let me see if I can find the stat. This is, uh, da, 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 yeah, 4.5 plus million players so far across wow. all those platforms. Wow. And where is it? Uh, da, 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 why can't I find this? <laughs> um I want to say, because I can't find it, but I believe the figure was three times the usage of Forza Horizon 4. Wow. Three years ago. Wow. So big, big deal. Who would have thought that many people would want to just drive a car around a circle? But, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, no. So this one, it's like kind of, it's a little, it's not open world, but it's it's more like open environments. It's oh. not like racetracks. Oh, and that's stuff. cool. Oh, that's And uh, this one takes, yeah, it takes place in Mexico, actually. So there's a lot of Mexican. Oh, that uh, would be counts. fun. And you, of course, you get yeah. to drive like Lamborghinis and stuff. So that's cool. You could, you could drive a, a Willie's Jeep, if you want. There's like a there's a crazy number of vehicles. You can't vehicles. drive the Cybertruck, not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Not no, yet. You know, knowing Microsoft, that will be in a DLC coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. Uh, back of the book coming up next. Uh, I've I've missed uh, our beer picks of the week. Mm -hmm. We've got one of those coming up. Some tips, uh, apps, enterprise. I was going to do a charcuterie of the week on Wednesday oh, Terrace. Oh, oh, <laughs> whoa. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Wow. So, you know, on the, uh, you make these, part of the Day of Dead, you make these altars, of, they call them ofrenda, and you put a picture of your deceased loved one in there, and then you put on the altar things they like. Okay. And I said to Lisa, what? <laughs> I said uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put uh, uh, her favorite candy Smarties on there. Right. I said, what would you put on mine? She said, charcuterie plate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want something that's prosciutto. gonna like, withstand the elements of the animals? Or no, no, no. It just sits there. You could glaze it or something. Actually, after I think after November fourth. Uh, by the way, the the deceased who come back to visit you on November first yeah. have been having such a good time. You have to chase mm -hmm. them away on the fourth and say, "Go back, nice. go back. We'll see you next year. Bye." And then you could eat the food. They said, but it won't have any flavor because all of the uh, it goes sucked mm -hmm. up by the ghosts. All the ghosts have eaten all the good mm -hmm. stuff. I so. said, "Want a little piece of perfect Toro sushi?" Would be mine. Oh. yeah, would be mine. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and Mary Jo, you'd probably want a, a good beer, I would imagine. Of course, a nice stout, yeah. beer. like an IPA, probably just to annoy me. <laughs> probably the, like a triple IPA. <laughs> <laughs> there are quite a few bottles of beer and mezcal on the friend I, I saw. I would, yes, I yes. <laughs> yes. Sure. What else did she said? Charcuterie and my and. Uh, she makes a delicious bolognese, a nice big pot of bolognese oh, sauce. Oh, right, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> she knows nice. the way to my heart, I'll tell you that. Our show today <laughs> brought to you by ESET. This is the way to reassure the boss that life will go on. I talk about this all the time going up to Russell. Every time I see him, I'm always nervous, you know, because we have uh, a lot of employees. Not all of them are geeks. Opening emails, and I'm always worried, you know, oh, we're going to get hit by ransomware. Uh, it's going to you know, just, you know, uh, be a challenge. And I always say to Russell, are we all right? Are we safe? It's kind of like the marathon man. Are we safe? Are we safe? And he says, yes, we're safe. I said, why, Russell? He says, because we use ESET. Actually, I was really surprised when he said that the first time. Now I know. I said, really? He said, oh, yeah. ESET, lightweight. Our editors, for instance, running uh, are running Windows 8. I said, 8? I think it's Windows 8.1. 
um, on a uh, Dell Precision Workstation. So, but they can't have something heavy duty on there because they've got to render video. I mean, they get they don't want it to slow down. So they have ESET on there to protect them. An older version of Windows, ESET's a great solution. ESET is also they're not only the kind of the best antivirus out there because it's lightweight, it's fast. They're also leaders in uh, the cybersecurity community. They do three times a year the ESET threat report. I'm sure you've heard Steve quote it many times on uh, Security Now. Forty page at least plus report that comes out three times a year, completely free. Uh, you can find it at welivesecurity.com. <clears throat> welivesecurity.com and search for threat report. Really interesting stats, lots of insight. Uh, that's where you'll find out about the new attacks, things like info stealers, stalkerware, of course, ransomware. Uh, because threats are constantly evolving, because the bad guys don't sit still, you need a dynamic approach to detection. It's not just, oh, download the signatures and scan the hard drive. You've got to be you've got to be faster, more precise than typical endpoint protection, and you have to be ready for zero days. I love what ESET's doing. It's called Dynamic Threat Defense. ESET Dynamic Threat Defense, EDTD. And what they do when an attachments uh, come in in your inbox, they have a cloud-based sandboxing technology. They upload it. They run it in the sandbox. Not, it's not running in your servers or in your network. It's out there. They run it and analyze it. They isolate it. They analyze it. These are, you know, if it's never before seen, there's no way they can use a virus signature to detect it. These, they look at documents, scripts, installers, of course, executables. It will, uh, it will run them in a safe sandboxed environment, do code analysis, deep inspection, using machine learning, in-memory analysis, artificial intelligence. EDTD actually enables behavior-based detection, and they can allow or block that attachment in minutes. So nothing comes in. Nothing comes in over the transom that isn't vetted and safe. This is brilliant. And be, it's fast, but there's no extra demands on your system resources because it's not running on your systems. This is something endpoint detection just can't do. No, look, no one, me or anyone else, wants to be patient zero in a cyber attack. If you're looking for world-class ransomware protection, you're going to want ESET's dynamic threat defense. And it comes with ESET Protect Complete, which also includes a lot of other great things, including endpoint security, full disk encryption. Uh, they have advanced security for Microsoft 365, so that closes the gaps uh, in the native protection. And right now, ESET Protect Complete is 20% off. Plus, you could try before you buy. So... Take a look at it. Try your free ESET business trial and an interactive demo, business.eset.com slash twit. And please use that address so they know you saw it here. I know you know that. Thank you for doing that. You'll save 20% too on ESET Protect Complete. Try it anyway. Uh, but but if you're going to buy, do it now. It's a limited time offer. Business.eset.com slash twit. We thank ESET so much for protecting us. Uh, Knock on wood, we haven't had a, any malware in uh, 15 years. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think we're probably a target of attack all the time. I mean, I'm sure there's always people trying to, you know, get us. All right, Paul Therod, let's uh, kick off the back of the book with your tip of the week. Yeah, I'm not a big Black Friday guy, but um, Microsoft and Google, and I know many others, are going to have Black Friday sales. I happen to cover both of those. Um, the Microsoft stuff, I mean, nothing dramatic there per se, but worth looking at. The Google one, if you're into this, into the Google hardware, some really good prices here. Um, for example, the Pixel 5a, which is already definitely the best value of this year in smartphones at 449 is going to wow. be $50 off, 399 Oh, wow. Uh, really yeah. good deal. And then, yeah. yeah, the Nest, what's the Nest speaker called? Nest Audio. This is the, you know, the Sonos One type speaker. Normally ninety nine ninety nine is now forty dollars off. Ooh, so it's fifty nine. Meaning you could get two of these things for one hundred and twenty bucks. I don't. I mean, I'm, I get a houseload of fun, like Sonos equipment, but that's a really good deal. Um, I've been using really the Google. Um, you know, I, I wish they still made the Max because I loved that. But right, I, I've been right. using that a lot. I used it this morning. But boy, fifty nine ninety nine. That's a great speaker. I might get a few and, of these. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So good to know about. Um, that's a good one. And then. The app pick is kind of interesting. Obviously, four is a Horizon 5, right? So I mentioned that. That's out 
This is, by the way, I should also say not only one of the like not only the biggest launch in uh, Xbox Game Studio history, also the best reviewed Xbox game of all time. What it is? Wow, yeah, Metacritic or whatever it, it is like ninety nine point nine. It's like it is the best reviewed game. It is available everywhere. Basically, it is no excuse not to play for Forza Horizon Five. So definitely check that out. But in slightly, well, I don't know, bigger news, but different news. Um, Mozilla Firefox announced this. Mozilla announced this week, rather. That Firefox is now available in the Microsoft Store for Windows 10 and 11. Oh, interesting. Meaning it's the first major browser not running like Chromium, right, in Microsoft Store. This was something that was not possible before this year. Microsoft changed the policies for the store to allow these other types you, of you apps. You can get in. Chrome in the store, right? No. No. Uh, oh, not yet. Uh, yeah. So that's interesting and, and according to uh, mozilla it's 100 percent exactly the same browser you get from the web except it isn't <laughs> so here's the caveat or the asterisk or whatever you want to call it um mozilla firefox when you download it from the web has software code in it that bypasses the lunatic default apps oh right scheme in windows 11 <laughs> but not, that's not available no, in the store I bet not. yeah so i do recommend firefox get it from that's the web hysterical. Uh, yeah <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if that was like a policy thing, you know, maybe uh, they can't screw with that kind of thing. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yep. Yep. Um, cool. Let's get an enterprise pick of the week with Mary Jo Foley. Right. Here's an unlikely coupling that was announced today. Facebook, a.k.a. Meta and Microsoft with Teams are going to be teaming up so that you can access Teams content from workplace and workplace content from within teams. That seems really odd, right? You're like, wait, don't they compete? Well, the company that's going to benefit the most from this is Facebook, I would say, because Teams has a much greater market share than Facebook Workplace does. The new name of that, by the way, is going to be Workplace by Meta. Oh. Sounds like, I don't even know what that sounds oh. like. It doesn't even sound like a product. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, I, here's how it's going to work. First, employees will be able to access content from workplace within Teams. Then early next year, people will be able to stream meetings and broadcasts from Teams into workplace. Um, later, I think later next year, Teams will come to workplace in terms of letting all users in workplace view Teams content interact with it and engage with it. So it's kind of a, a, a gradual rollout of this capability. And from the Microsoft side, this doesn't surprise me because Microsoft is doing deals with all kinds of companies yeah. to get their content into teams, right? Even people who are competitors. So, you know, Microsoft's like, hey, sure, you want to put workplace in there? We don't care. We, you barely even touch anything in terms of our market share or our mind share. So why not? And it was very interesting to me who made this announcement today. It was Facebook. It was not Microsoft who made the announcement. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. I don't know why you'd want Facebook in your business, but okay. That's so many people are saying that in the Discord. Yeah. They're like, not at my company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know a single person who uses workplace in a business setting, but they, but then in the press release today, there are some, and there are, there are some companies that have both teams and workplace. So, okay. Mm -hmm. It happens. <sighs> yeah. What else? Uh, two code names. Two code saying. names. Wow. Two for the price of one. And a funny story of how we found out about these code names. Um, the code name for Windows 11 SE is Haley. The, co the code name for the Surface Laptop SE device is Vivian. Vivian. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Here's how we found out, which is kind of funny. When Microsoft was pre-briefing us on these announcements, they accidentally put the um, an original marketing copy of this Oops. announcement on the site where we were looking at the content. And it said, instead of those product names, these two code names. So I went back to them and I said... Um, I think you put the version <laughs> with the code names up and the woman's like, oh, geez. Okay. Oh. I'll get it down. And I said, it's good though. We wanted to know the code names. So that's good. Like, uh, thanks for helping us with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. uh, 
No, so as Windows Central pointed out, Zach Bowden over there, he said, there's always an engineering code name and a marketing code name. So these are the marketing code names for the SE things. Zach says the engineering code name for um, the Surface laptop, I believe he said, was um, Tengen. I think that's what he, he said. Tengen. Um, hmm. It's, I couldn't remember if it was Windows 11 SE or, yeah, it was a Surface Laptop SE. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. They have different code names so they can track leaks. Is engineering leaking oh, or right, marketing leaking? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So those are the marketing code names. Haley and Vivian, whoever they are, we don't know. Why they use those code names, we don't know. But there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Haley. Vivian's fun. I, I think of Vivian yeah, Vance right? from I Love Lucy. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know who yep. Haley H A I L E Y. I don't know. Right. That I was like, are they hurricane code names or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you think they have a program that generates these or no? Somebody gets to think it up. I think people get to pick the code names. Yeah. One time in my entire history of covering Microsoft, somebody let me pick a code name oh, neat. for something. Oh, that's yeah. fun. So I, my, I had to put my thinking cap on that for that because I'm like, okay, I got to pick something that's really unique so it'll be easy to track it once they start doing development <laughs> on it. So I picked Reykjavik oh, and they good. use that as the code I name. like that. That's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. That's I'm like, I'm not going to pick something easy like Yellowstone no, or something no, no. that Reykjavik. shows up everywhere. That's good, yeah. Yeah. All right. Spelling it though, tricky. <laughs> yeah. There's a J in there not somewhere. Easy. I know that. There is. There is. Beer pick of the yeah. week. Right. So we're into fall here in the United States yes, we now. Are. Yes, yes. So uh, I've been doing more stouts and imperial stout picks. Today's pick is a stout. It is from Brooklyn. There's a woman, women and veteran owned brewery in Brooklyn called Talia. I've done one of their picks before for a beer pick. Um, if you're ever in Brooklyn, by the way, their tap room is gorgeous. Like if we ever do meetups again, we should definitely oh, have a meetup at this Deal. place. It's Deal. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have a beer uh, called Overnight Oats. You know, I don't know how many people listening know what overnight oats are. I um, make but them. I know what they are. Yeah. yeah. So you take a, you take like a milk, like a soy milk or an almond milk. You put your cold oats in, you add chia seeds and like cinnamon, nutmeg, chocolate, whatever you want in there. Leave it overnight in the fridge. And the next morning you have something that's kind of like muesli, right? Yeah. It's like- It's not quite cold. oatmeal. Not quite oatmeal. You could heat it up if you wanted, but it's, yeah. it's way better tasting than- my description is making it sound. No, it's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> and it's easy. That's the point. It's easy and you can have your breakfast ready in the morning. It's great. Um, so they made a beer called Overnight Oats, which is a stout. And they took multiple kinds of oats, plus banana, plus cinnamon, plus vanilla. And they brewed this all together to make a stout. And it tastes, I just had one the other day. It tastes kind of like coffee with cinnamon and mm. spices. Um I, I didn't really taste the oats, but oats and beer usually just kind of smooth it out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very interesting. It's Talia's Overnight Oats, 6.5, so not that high alcohol. A very nice fall slash seasonal stout that you could drink a lot of and enjoy. Mm. Yeah, Tasty. I think it's interesting what people are doing. Like they're trying all these different things in stouts. There are a lot of things where they make them so sweet and so crazy with sugar, but this one's more like a nice breakfast stout that isn't too crazy on the sweetness level. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, it was good. I don't think the so, French drink much stout. I think my mic is muted. I had I had turned you off so that you could file if you wanted to. You missed my excellent joke that I share with Mary Jo privately when we discovered the Surface code names, which was that Microsoft also cannot communicate effectively internally, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's that's okay. that's it's okay. ironic, it's isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, cool. Cool. I guess yeah. we're done. Yeah, we're done. Wow. It had to happen eventually. Well, I wish it hadn't happened. And we caught so you up, which is good. I You're feel caught, caught up. up. I, don't, I didn't miss a thing. Yeah. Uh, we do Windows Weekly. Uh, if I'm not here, Micah Sargent does it with, of course, Paul and Mary Jo every <laughs> Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 Oh, no, no. 1900 UTC. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're in that two-week hangover or oh, jet lag boy. period after. Yes. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. 
Uh, if you want to watch us do it live, there's a stream, audio or video, actually, uh, at twit.tv slash live or live.twit.tv. People who watch live often chat live at irc.twit.tv. And, of course, we'd love it if you join Club Twit. One of the benefits of Club Twit is that fantastic Discord. Mary Jo's always in there, and uh, I am. and we, It's just a community. I just love it. It's, the, it's my new social network. Uh, plus, you get ad-free versions of all the shows. You get a special Twit Plus feed. Uh, it helps support Twit. That's the best part. And you can find out more at twit.tv slash club twit. Seven bucks a month. That's all. Twit.tv slash club twit. On-demand versions of the show available at twit.tv slash ww. Um, and actually, the best thing to do is subscribe. Find a podcast client. Subscribe. That way you'll get it automatically every single uh, Wednesday, the minute it's available. And you can listen at your leisure. People who listen at their leisure... Often uh, chat at their leisure in our discourse. Discourse is a, a forum software. It really works well at twit.community or on our Mastodon instance, which is kind of a uh, open, federated Twitter. That's at twit.social. You're invited to join both. No charge. Thank you, Paul and Mary Jo. Paul Therot's at therot.com. That's his website. His books, uh, including the Field Guide to Windows 10 and the upcoming Field Guide to Windows 11, are at LeanPub. LeanPub. Dot com. Mary Jo Foley writes for ZDNet. Her blog's easy to find. It's called It's uh, All About Microsoft. Com. And uh, between the two of them, there ain't nothing that happens up there in Redmond that they don't know about. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Enjoy your fall weekend, and we will see you uh, next time on Windows Weekly. Bye bye. Sure. If you find yourself talking to those virtual assistants in your house quite often, or maybe you can make your light turn on and off with the touch of a button, well, Smart Tech Today is the show for you. Join Matthew Casanelli and myself, Micah Sargent, every week as we talk all about smart stuff and the fun that comes along with it.